I have given a name to my pain. Welcome to episode 142 of the Batman on Film podcast. BOF is the sponsor as well as a proud member of the Batman Podcast Network. Check out all of the shows over at batmanpodcastnetwork.com and follow our Twitter at BatPodNetwork. If you're listening to the show on iTunes, if you take the time to rate and review us, we will read the review on the air. BOF is also now on Patreon. If you like what we do here at BOF, whether it's the podcasts, vlogs, or the website itself, and you want to help support us, if you're so inclined, please head over to patreon.com slash batmanonfilm and sign up. I'm your host for the, today's episode, Ryan Haas, and on today's show, we have a ton of great DC topics to talk about, namely our first big look at Joker, and then we'll talk a little bit about a movie called Shazam!, so here to help me discuss all of that on our panel today, we have first Mr. Eric Holtzman. How are you doing? What? All right. What's going on? I'm Good. ready. Let's go. Yeah. Let's do this. The Jay do Leno. It. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> what a great impression, Eric. Uh, we also have uh, we also have Gary Grev here. I like the South Park reference. That's pretty good. Wow, what a wonderful audience. That's a great impression. <laughs> I, oh, I did not notice right away. I didn't notice right away that that was Jay Leno. I just thought it was like, um, you know, some side of New York that I hadn't been exposed to here in the Midwest yet. And that was a regional accent that I was unaware of. So, but once you say it, that's pretty good Leno. <laughs> when I get mad, my New York accent comes out. It is funny. Like when so, you and Pete, um, I can't imagine get talking and, 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 and really lean into the, the New York accent. <laughs> you know, it gets it gets pretty good. I imagine there's like a lot of sh- like shoulder slapping and people <laughs> telling each other to come on and things like this. <laughs> nah, n- nothing like that. We're uh, we're tame. <laughs> <laughs> no, I'm, I'm in the Midwest. I'm tame. I know what tame is. This is well, the that's Midwest. True. That's true. <laughs> <laughs> no, we talk a lot with our hands. And that's just a Which is great for podcasting, right? Clearly. Exactly. <laughs> If we were doing vlogs, forget it. You guys wouldn't see oh our faces gosh. at all. You would just see hands. You just see just hands cameras flying, flying the across the room. Yeah, <laughs> it'd be a little crazy. But but uh, we we also have Ryan Lauer on the on the line here. So how are you doing? Oh, hey, how you doing? Doing great. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Did I mess up? Was there an email that I there was up? no was email. I supposed to do a Leno too? <laughs> no. Blame oh, Eric. Man. But hey, doing good. Hi. Hey. Hi, great. Hey. Uh, I could, you know, if I was going to do an impression, I could be like, hey, we also have Pete. Pete's also here. <laughs> hey, guys, hey, guys, how you doing? <laughs> Pete Vera. <laughs> Pete, it's Pete Vera after dark. Oh, no. Oh, I can't wait to talk about Shazam, but I haven't seen it yet because I'm, I'm so busy. <laughs> yeah, he is actually. Poor, poor Pete. I know, exactly. <laughs> <laughs> Would like to have him on, but he's. I think he's, when does he see it? Does he see it tomorrow, Saturday? Tomorrow, he said. I think um, he's actually working the NIT, which is the yeah. the you know the basketball tournament that's not the NCAA tournament. The you're not as good <laughs> tournament. Exactly. Yeah. So that's what he's working. So that's where he's he's at. Yep. But we are here, and we're going to talk about all this fun stuff. So, <laughs> um, so before we talk about Joker, I think there's one very important um, DC related topic, and that is. Um, does does everybody get did everybody get their tickets for Avengers Endgame? Yes, I did, and I did not yes. have to buy them off eBay. Ooh, <laughs> yeah, I got mine. Uh, I took. I was talking to you guys because when I was first looking, I remember I it was a it was a pain. Yeah, the yeah. AMC servers crashed. So, and they didn't come back on till like twelve hours later. It was some ridiculous time. Yeah, that you couldn't get tickets. Then I. Yeah, I I've never got, seen. I've never yeah. seen such a weird thing because like. You would log on like it was what what day was it this week? It was like a 
Like it some was random Tuesday. Tuesday, yeah. Oh. So I wake up, it's like eight in the morning, and it's, everybody's like, "Oh my god, Avengers Endgame tickets are on sale!" And I'm like, "Oh crap!" I'm like, "Is that a big deal?" Like, surely there's going to be enough. And I start looking <laughs> at the screenings, and the screenings are like sold out like immediately because I wanted yeah. to see it like on Thursday at six in IMAX or something. And the whole entire screening's already sold out, and it's eight in the morning. I'm like, "Oh, yeah. this might be bad." So then I start trying to look for other tickets, and it pulls up the screen. It's like, you're in line to wait for tickets. It's going to take an hour to get just yeah. to get your place in line. I'm like, oh, my God. So then I just started, you know, for the next hour or so, just clicking on stuff, hoping that I would it would bypass that. And eventually it did. So throughout the day, I ended up getting pretty good tickets for, like, f- uh, Friday. But then I eventually also was able to get tickets for Thursday, too. So I'm going to keep both. And if it's amazing, maybe I'll... See it, You'll see it Thursday twice. and Friday, yeah, <laughs> and it's it is three hours, three hours and two minutes. That's insane. I know, I know. Yeah, I mean, it, it was similar. I kept. I think I sent you. I think you're the first person I spoke to about it, and you le- then you sent me the screenshot of you waiting, and I'm like, get the yeah. hell out of here, an hour. <laughs> so I was like, that's crazy. And then I'm just I'm looking, and I was trying to get one for the six o'clock show, and like I have a lot of theaters to choose from where I live, so it's I'm pretty fortunate in that regard. But they were all sold out, or they all had like front mm. row left, and I'm like, I'm not sitting yeah, yeah. in the front row. Yeah. And then I finally I look, I hopped back in real quick, and there was one in row D, which isn't too bad. So I was like, you know what, I'll bite the bullet. It was right in the end, so I was like, I'll just bite the bullet and get that ticket. So I am seeing it at six o'clock. So nice. Yes, which is cool. Yeah, I didn't think that it was. I mean, I knew obviously it was going to be big. I didn't think it was going to be this kind of madness as soon as tickets went on sale. Like, I don't know. I guess I was just blown away that I was like, oh, I really need to pick a time and I need to do it right now. And I need to wait in this line digitally, which is pretty ridiculous. But okay, <laughs> yeah. I'm going to keep it open and I'm going to buy my tickets. You're supposed to be able to skip the line by going online, and that did not happen. But nope. Yeah, yeah. It's cr- it was yeah, it was yeah. something. But oh well, got my yeah. Tickets. I was caught unprepared. I was not <laughs> aware. I didn't know the rush was coming. It's like uh, I was the last guy to get to California in the gold rush, and there was no gold left. <laughs> <laughs> so no, I don't have tickets yet. Um, oh no, no, I don't. And You're screwed, man. I'm You're trying so to screwed. figure. Out. I know. Like, which one of these kids do I need to trade for tickets on opening (laughs) night? Uh, But I actually have um, a buddy that said he got some tickets. He's not sure whether or not he travels for work, if he's going to be back on that Thursday. If he is, um, if his wife doesn't want to go, and she probably won't, uh, we'll go together. And if he's not back, I can can grab those from him. So, yeah, it may have saved me on this one. But nope, I was completely unaware. In fact, I was so unaware. And I love the Mar movies, so it it doesn't have anything to do with that. I just didn't even know they were going on sale that day. I guess I... Well, nobody did. It was like a... Oh, okay. Well, that explains it. And then I saw, you know, some posts and tweets like, hey, these are for sale. And didn't think twice. Like, okay, yeah. So in the next, you know, week or so next few days i'll have to remember to grab those and then i start seeing everything about you know this site is crashed and there's no this is sold out and blah 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 i'm like (laughs) i'm in the middle of this meeting do i step out at work and be like oh guys sorry it's a call i really it's my wife the kid's sick and just like go furiously try to get tickets but no nothing was working anyway so i resigned myself to to scour secondary markets or pray for the pity of friends (laughs) Uh. it's crazy that that we have to do that for Movie th- tickets, secondary well, for, markets for movie tickets. I mean, right, that's nuts. Concerts, yeah, I'm used to doing that for concerts, but but yeah, I mean, uh, it makes sense if you if you really wanted to see this movie, like a lot of people obviously do, and you want to see it like as soon as possible, so you don't get spoiled in like an IMAX or something. It's gonna <laughs> at this point, it's gonna be really tough to get good seats. Well, and you One basically more- need to at this point because you know. I haven't seen anything announced, and I doubt it is at this point. Um, but if you guys have seen it, please educate me. If there are any early screenings, you know, all of what we've seen for Aquaman and Shazam. But um, man, I don't think that that will happen. I, I think for this one, it'll be more like a if you see it early, it'll be because you're it's like a press screening or like right. a sure. You know, like like a test screening kind of thing. But I was going to say, you need to start seeing these movies as early as humanly possible because, you know, Shazam's just, you know, open wide here, you know, Thursday night previews. 
and that thing's getting spoiled left and right online. Yep. So yeah, it's, it was getting it's spoiled a real shame. Sec- seconds after the the previous screenings, we all saw. Right. You know. <laughs> oh yeah, I think there there are definitely individuals out spoiling it at that point. There are, you know, sites sites running full spoiler articles oh, at yeah. this point. There were some pretty super lame website both today and like a week ago or a few days ago at least that were spoiling straight up the end credits uh, yeah. of mm-hmm. of Shazam in in the headlines yep you know and i'm like what are you doing yep like after the movie's out I, my the, my whole, my rule has always been after the movie's out it's kind of fair game but that's like the wide release <laughs> I give you a lot of you know, like I give a lot of respect if you can hold off till Tuesday of the next week. Sure, right? like, like you know, if sure. it's I would Saturday, say, I would say that I would say that for like um for maybe websites and headlines specifically, right? But like general social media people just talking about stuff, I would say get off the day it comes out if you don't want to be spoiled. Right, it's kind of on you at that point. It's a personal choice. That's yeah, yeah. But I the websites and, and and headlines, I I would agree with you. So. I have a really quick question back to Ooh. Avengers and Marvel. Oh, um, yeah. Is anyone doing the 22 movie marathon? F- no. <laughs> oh, man. <laughs> who, do you know anyone who could who's possibly doing it? do that? Do you know it's anyone? It's like 56 doing hours. It? No. I didn't. What was the. Um, so I had two different friends send me links, or actually, Eric, a buddy of mine, tagged the two yet. of us in one of the <laughs> tweets. And I, I, I haven't opened it up to read the details yet. Um, but like, what are the stipulations? I mean, is it you can't fall asleep? Is there like a challenge to earning this money? <laughs> like, you don't get to eat, earn uh, money. No, well, you pay the, them to that's see the, the one movie. that has the mon- monetary prize. That's the one that you you can if you oh, watch all you of get a thousand bucks. You get a thousand bucks. Yeah. Oh. The other one is just AMC is running it. I think just They're a marathon, a twenty two hour marathon. Yeah, of all the Marvel, all the movies up to Endgame, every single one, and that it's one hundred twenty five dollars. I actually clicked through just to see what it cost. Yeah, that sounds like um. a good idea. <laughs> I mean, if you well, can... Especially like... Of like, do you really want your first viewing of Endgame to be after sitting in a damn seat no. for 50 well, hours? Then, like... th- I mean, you would, you would like, skip movies and stuff. Like, you, there's no way somebody yeah, would do that. There, it has to be money. multiple days. Yeah, I but I mean... here's the deal. For me, like, <laughs> if, if I'm going to skip a movie, I you know, I probably... You know, functionally, I would want it to be when I'm very hungry or very tired, but I just basically want to skip Iron Man 2, so it's like you're four hours in of 22, <laughs> and now it's when I'm taking my break. I mean, it doesn't really fit in the timeline very well. Yeah, but that I thought that was crazy. I mean, I guess it's a way to make money, but I'd be surprised if... I mean, people will do it, but I'll be surprised if anyone I know does it, that's for sure. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, here in a couple of weeks, I'm going to do the... um. I'm going to Indy to do the Dark Knight trilogy in IMAX, and that's well, three I've, movies in yeah, one Yeah, I've day. done that. I did that, but not in IMAX. I did it the night that Rises came out. I saw all three right. of them. So I've yeah. done the, the time. I put in the time, so I, yeah. <laughs> I'm with you there, but they're yeah. not in IMAX. So. I was reading the uh, some of the description, because they've already done the the LA screening of that, so they could record um, right. Chris Nolan's Q&A. So and it sounded like the Q and A itself went really well, but the presentation of the movie Ooh, yeah, went when like, really played. bad. It yeah, rises like, sound like projector issues. The projector busted, and they ended up having to <laughs> show it digitally <laughs> from the for the second half. Oh, I would have been so pissed. But and they uh, said it was like half screen, some of it. Like it, yeah, yeah, it didn't like expand that. to the full aspect yeah. ratio. Yeah, but, had it, the... it, it and because they had to switch to digital, right? And it, it yeah. Ugh. That would have been, that would have sucked, but it uh, would have. yeah. But the thing is about IMAX is that it's it takes like an hour ish, you know, over an hour to switch out the reels between movies. So even if the movies are like seven and a half hours, it's going to be like eleven or twelve by the time you have to like wait in between each movie for them to reset. So it'll be worth it. <laughs> still, ex- I'm still have excited. Good time. Yeah, yep. It's a lot of time and effort spent. To, to do that so oh, I, I know you'll it'll be enjoy a good time. it yeah oh yeah you'll enjoy it yeah but uh that's that's enough uh marvel talk i guess <laughs> uh so before we talk about joker let's talk about joker so on monday monday was april 1st april fool's day and we got a little bit of joker news uh 
it we got a like a little teaser trailer and a poster for for what the Joker is going to look like in in Gotham in Gotham's finale. And uh, uh I wasn't expecting that. And I knew there would be like some promotion and stuff, but it was interesting the fact that they used uh it was kind of cool the way they used April Fool's Day to kind of promote that and and have a first look at what their Joker looks like, and uh, you know most people know my thoughts on the on it, and I and I, and I think it looks pretty horrible, but uh, I kind of wanted to get your guys' quick reactions on it. I mean, I don't know. I feel like I don't have the grounds to say this because I haven't watched Gotham since the beginning of season two, but. It matches everything I would expect for the Gotham Joker mm. to be, given my experience yeah. and my exposure since my experience. And that is it. Um, you know, man, they're making a choice. They're making a big old ugly bad choice, but they're really doing it. Um, you know, I'll watch the last episode because that's, you know, that's when it get, turns Batman. And if it's Batman, you're going to get my eyeballs on it but I wasn't going to dedicate the last few years to it. So we'll see. I can't imagine because, you know, there's been a little bit of, like you said in the teaser, you you see the character in action. I can't imagine that it looks a lot better uh, on the TV screen than what it looks like on my phone or computer. So I do not have high hopes uh, for the Gotham Joker. Eric does watch Gotham like I do. He's the resident expert. <laughs> yeah. What what does Eric Eric Eric's silence speaks volumes? Is that uh what we're operating under here? <laughs> Every once in a while he shifts into and I will say no more. This might be it. Yep. He's really not saying anything about this. Uh Laura, what'd you think of it? No. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, no, that's, don't do it. Want to talk about it? That's it. Like, just no. I looked, and that looks bad. I like you said, Garrett. I don't. I mean, who am I to critique it when I haven't watched it since season one? So this may work on Gotham, uh, or I'm nailing it and saying no. Um, yeah, that's just. I don't like it. Yeah, I mean, but, I was just like, it looks like. It looks like the Crypt Keeper and with like Jack Nicholson trying to do a Heath Ledger yeah. impression is kind of what it looks like, it, which is is like a you could say about Gotham in, in general. Well, it was kind of like you remember the uh, the Batman cartoon and that, sure. that yes. Joker, Mister Dreadlock yes. Joker. It Dreadlock was like Joker working so hard to try to be different to distance itself. Yeah, that it's like it's just obnoxious. Like, nobody's going to think that you're... If you stick to a general look of the Joker, nobody's going to think that you're copying anything except that you're just being true to the character. Right. Well, what was interesting about that one, too, is, like, they went so far at the beginning of that series, and, like, as the seasons went on, they they pushed him more and more towards a traditional Joker. (laughs) Yeah. Like, they gave him... I mean, it was still their Joker, but they, uh, they gave him a suit, they give him a purple suit instead of a straight jacket thing and they cleaned him up a little bit did he have giant like ape-like feet or something too yeah he was barefoot sure yep okay yeah yeah so i thought that one was different but i wasn't like like it was just like what i said and the voice was very different too you're working almost way too hard to try to make this different it's okay then that's just kind of what i got with this too is really trying to make it different but hey throw a purple trench coat on him yeah, I mean it's kind of a growing trend too. Like you can and and it's like a, you know, trying to hit a dartboard and some of it works really well. Like Heath Ledger is your quintessential example of the Joker in the Dark Knight being a reinterpretation that still is like definitive because it hits the mark of what the character is so well. Yeah. And others there's and it's just done really well, you know, but you've got like the ba- the Joker and the Batman. You have Jared Leto's Joker. You have Gotham's version of the Joker. And then, you know, we'll get into this too. We'll get into um, uh, Joaquin Phoenix's Joker. That's and that's a big topic. And I think, from what I've seen so far, we'll, which we'll get into, it, I think it's bound to be more successful than than most in terms of reinterpreting this character. 
Okay, Gotham's Joker. Uh, I did see it. And since I watched the show and I've seen his evolution from Jerome to Jeremiah to now this. Uh, wow. <laughs> he looked kind of more of like a horror villain to me than the Joker. Um, I guess that's the way I'd explain it. Uh, Nosferatu or... <laughs> You know, someone, right. someone along those lines, not so much the Joker that we know. Uh, the laugh was weird. It's kind of like a, it was kind of like a spoof on a on Hamill's laugh a little bit. Yeah, I thought. Um, I almost I saw that trailer. I almost thought they were like inserting Hamill laughs in there or right. trying to make it really sound close. But he has. Uh, we do see a batarang in his hand. Yes. Like, so literally do, stuck in his hand. Right, so we do know that Batman is coming, so that was the good thing from the trailer yeah. that I really took. <laughs> That's what I really took, and I was like, alright, cool, we know for sure now. But, uh, yeah, I was not impressed, and it goes along with a lot of the things that that show has done. Um, right. Like, Bane's costume. Oh, uh, Bane. Bane himself actually wasn't terrible, but Bane's costume, really bad. He's pretty terrible. Uh, no, I didn't think so. I really didn't think so. I thought it was better than I thought it would be, I guess. Yeah, better than I thought, but that doesn't make well, it yeah. good. <laughs> <laughs> we're, we're talking about Gotham here, so we kind of have to, you know, there's a curve. There's like Exactly, <laughs> and that's what I'm saying. I, I refuse to make that curve. I refuse to lower my Batman <laughs> standards here. <laughs> well, let's see. I'm I'm interested to see how the Batman costume looks. That's what oh, I'm I am too. To they, and the, one thing good that they did release that, that the Gotham did promote is that they had a another poster that uh that was of batman uh that you see from the back uh, yeah and i thought that looked pretty cool yeah that was that was so yeah i think we're just waiting now to see i mean there's the one episode and then there's the 10 year jump episode which i'm assuming that's where we're gonna see obviously we'll see batman i'm just wondering exactly if we're gonna, if we're gonna see joker in the one before that i don't think that, so you don't think so i don't think we will all right at least I hope we don't. They have a lot. <laughs> they have a lot to cover. It's almost like it's like uh, Revenge of the Sith, but worse. You know, like before Revenge of the Sith came out, you're like, they have a lot they have to do to like jump from episode two to episode four, and how are they going to yeah. do it in two hours? It's like the same thing because like all all of the stuff that's supposed to lead up to Bruce Wayne becoming Batman hasn't really happened right in Gotham. Really? Mm-hmm. Like, he hasn't really gone off to train. There's no reason for him to take up the mantle of a bat. Right. You know, like, there's not, there's none of that. So I don't know if they're going to, like, at the end of the penultimate episode, if Bruce is going to be like, I got to leave Gotham and, you know, train and stuff. <laughs> and well, then the next episode, yeah. he's just Batman, you know? Like, is... that they'll still have a ton of blanks that you have to fill in. Right. And uh, I don't know. Is there a... uh? What was I gonna say? Is it two hours? Is the finale two hours? I, I don't I, know. I don't know either. I'm I kind of don't think it is. I think it's actually like it's gonna like fade in and it's gonna say done, and then that's gonna be the end because they just realize yeah we're over we're over this shit. <laughs> like we we have uh, we don't know we have also painted <laughs> yeah, ourselves into a corner. We don't know. <laughs> we don't know. The lips. <laughs> yeah. No, I think I've I heard it could have been it could be two hours. So uh, if that's the case, then maybe they'll just fill in a lot of the time there. I'm or, planning on it feeling like two hours. But are you guys gonna watch Lauer and Garrett? Are you guys gonna watch? Yeah, the finale. You watch? Yeah, the finale? I'm in. Yeah, I'm in for the finale. Okay. Uh, like I, I said, it nothing to do with my life on that <laughs> night. <laughs> I yeah. might. Yeah, I should say I should say this. I will certainly DVR it. And um, I'm not going to plan my night around watching it, like all eager to discuss, you know, or, or you know, tweet while it's going well, on or to. something. I don't have a choice. Yeah, you <laughs> do. You do. You know what? I have to. I might be, I might need to get back into, because um, the first couple episodes I made an effort to watch to support the green room, green yes, room you with did. you and Pete. you did. This might be the one that pulls me back into the fold. Lower it in, though. I think for the, I think for the finale. <laughs> yeah, I think I'm here to support you at the, at the bitter end. Eric, I support you when you make good decisions. 
<laughs> that's what good so, friends do. Yeah. Otherwise, you're just an enabler. I mean, it's not yeah. like there's a there's been a Martha moment in Gotham or anything. So. Well, every second of every episode is a Martha moment. <laughs> How dare you speak of the Martha moment like this? <laughs> and I like the Martha moment. I uh, yeah, I I really doesn't bother me that much either. I can't really complain about that. So I understand but, why people think it's cheesy, but I get why it doesn't bother me. <laughs> So. Yeah, but, uh, but yeah, that's Gotham. So like, by the end of the month, we'll uh, we'll know whether it was successful or not. Yeah. So, uh, so we got that Joker on Monday, but on Tuesday, we got another interesting Joker occurrence. Uh, the director of of the Joker movie that comes out in October, starring Joaquin Phoenix, uh, on Instagram, he he released a poster. Uh, for the movie like a first uh so we've seen like some behind the scenes images and stuff like that but uh but uh todd phillips released like their our first like real piece of marketing from the movie Mm -hmm. and um it's a really interesting poster very moody uh you know and it's got joaquin phoenix joker as the tagline is put on a happy face which i thought was pretty pretty cool and uh, October 4th, and a very, very little tiny DC logo, which the first thing I thought was, well, I guess they're not really going to do separate branding for this movie like they said that they would. At least that's not the, you know, what I'm you know, seeing so far. Yeah, no, and I think um, you know, that was in- an interesting move. Um, at this point, I would say, like, you know, only time will tell why they made that choice and maybe it maybe time also will not tell and we'll never really know and maybe it just um it comes down to uh, a poor decision and maybe it is a change of strategy but i will say this if they if warner brothers is still planning on having a separate kind of imprint imprint or a different bit of branding for these one-off you know a little bit different take type stories that you know, don't share continuity with anything else. If they're actually going to have that label uh, and imprint, they missed a really big opportunity because this trailer has had, you know, yeah. in a very short amount of time, 16 million views already. Yeah, and climbing. Insane. So sure. it's been blown up and, you know, it was a big topic of conversation across social media platforms. If they were going, if they are going to do that title and imprint, um, I think they would definitely miss the mark uh, not debuting it here. And it didn't ha- need to be like a lot of fanfare, but, um, you know, yeah. sort of starting with the end, you know, the end of that trailer cuts to a DC logo. I think it's the last thing we see. That would have been yeah. a great place for it. You know, it doesn't need to be a big separate, you know, event and announcement and unveiling, but it, it if it's going to exist, it should have been there. You wonder if they're keeping their options open. Um, well, yeah, that's the other. You don't chatter, know, right? but you're wondering. You just wonder if that's the case. What do you mean by uh, keep their options open? Just to do whatever they want, not be tied into anything. Like we're talking about rebranding, gotcha. which would be cool. But if they just if they don't want that yet, say they're waiting till after this movie. Like if the Joker does well, which I mean, it definitely appears like it will. Then after that, they might say, "Okay, now we'll start." And this was the first movie of whatever they want to call it yeah you're saying like they could make it connected and all that which that's they're not going to do that like i would be so shocked if anything like that happened i mean this thing is supposed to be it's intentionally its own thing it's like an art house kind of movie well eric are you saying that phoenix is you know he's he's not going to do more than this i don't think i don't think they want to connect it i just think they're not sure what they want to do with this specific these specific properties like maybe after joker we'll yeah. get penguin and maybe after penguin we'll get riddler like maybe you'll get just these one off villains or a two face movie or right. a clay face movie that'd be great like but i i can see that like i think it's my my hunch was that it was what what garrett was saying like after the success of Aquaman, maybe they're feeling like we don't need to do separate branding. People will just get it. We can do whatever we want. And they're just like leaving it the way it is, which Mm -hmm. I think, okay. So a couple things. Um, What's interesting to me 
and I highly doubt this is connected, but if you go back to comic books and you think about Elseworlds, the first Elseworlds tale was Gotham by Gaslight, but it wasn't branded Elseworlds. Right. There was no concept for it. Right. That didn't exist yet. It was just, uh, hey, here's this story. It clearly isn't the, the Batman you're reading about in Batman comics based on the setting and the different take on the character and some historical elements. Um, and then afterward, it was like, okay, that thing landed. We want to do more of these. And let's make it clear that these are their separate things. Um, you know, it's like Marvel has what if and DC has kind of had the Elseworlds tales. So maybe they go back into it and they sort of say, um, oh, yeah, that Joker movie that, you know, you all liked, hopefully, <laughs> in this future. Uh, that was our first foray into this black label or, you know, Elseworlds films or whatever else it is. Um, so, you know, there, there's the potential there. Um, I do think, I do think if DC assumes that audiences are just going to get it, or if Warner Brothers, let me say that, if Warner Brothers assumes that audiences are just going to get it and they don't need to make it overt, um, I think they are giving the general audience too much credit. And I don't mean that as pejoratively as it sounds. I just know, you know, my friends, my coworkers who aren't into this stuff as much as us or anyone listening to this podcast would be, uh, we're confused. They were intrigued. They liked what they saw. But they definitely, the majority of them did not understand that this was its own thing. It wasn't a prequel to something else. It wasn't a sequel to a different thing. It wasn't connected to Jared Leto. It wasn't connected to Heath Ledger, was which I heard the most of. Um, right. Yeah. I think it's. I think it's. It's almost a little bit arrogant. <laughs> like a, that might sound what's a little more about, negative than I mean it. Whole, but yeah. Oh, but what's funny about the whole thing to me is that they have all these rules for the movies, like. Or, or or like the lack lack of oversight for the movies where it's like, oh, people just get it. We're not going to do separate labeling. And we've got like two Jokers on film, and, you know, kind of whatever. But like for TV, can't can't use Batman on TV. Can't use the Joker can't have green hair on TV, you know. You can't use this character or that character. You can't have Batman and Arrow, you know. We have all these rules for that because they don't want people to get confused. But when it comes to the movies at this current moment, they're just kind of doing whatever. <laughs> yeah. It seems like, um, well, man, if we're going to do stuff like this, couldn't we have had Batman instead of green arrow on Smallville? It <laughs> couldn't, you know, right. It's it, and obviously the approach has changed with time, but I don't right, know exactly. Um, you know, we've sort of, um, gotten into a bit of the, the side analysis about what's going on, you know, with the approach to the, to the flick, but, I don't know. What'd you guys just think of the trailer overall? Yeah. So, so when that poster came out, the, what Todd Phillips said along with it was, you know, trailer coming tomorrow. And we were like, Oh, so we get more than just a poster. It's a trailer tomorrow. So, and that's exactly what we got. And uh, yeah. So what did you guys think of the trailer? Lauer, you need to talk. The first, as soon as it was uh, up and I watched, it was, surprising to me because I didn't know what to expect per se, but I didn't expect that. And as soon as it was over, I didn't have any negative, (laughs) I didn't have like anything, any negative thoughts to it, but I just instantly like replayed it. And then I, I let it kind of like sit and then I played it again. And I don't know how many times I've watched it. Cause I just, I, something about it is like fascinating to me and I don't really know why, but I just, I, I think the, Everything's just come together. And initially when this movie was batted around for being an idea, I was very much like, you know what? Take the Joker aspect out of it and I'm there. Like the the movie, the concept sounds good, but take Joker out of it because it just seems like it's a cash cow. You're just trying to bank on a, a name. And I don't necess- as many have said too, of like, I don't need a I don't need to feel sympathetic for a Joker. I don't need an origin. But then Todd Phillips' name was thrown in, and I'm like, hmm, you have my interest. And then Joaquin Phoenix was thrown in, I'm like, well, now you have my attention. And then ever since then, everything's just everything that's come out about it has caught my interest more and more. It's where I've been legit excited for a trailer. And then after this went through, I'm just like, yeah, my initial thoughts, I wasn't like concerned because I wasn't like, oh my gosh, this is going to ruin anything. Um <laughs> 
I, I, I wish you would have like, been like that. Kinda, yeah, it would have been great. Like, like in real life, that's what you like ran, <laughs> ran around <laughs> saying that in that voice. Sense. I don't need it. <laughs> um, but th- no I, one has said that. Come on. I know. Uh, <laughs> but yeah, I just thought it was very just a good trailer. Um, specifics, like. I think it was great in like how they kind of practiced restraint because it was a very almost a sympathetic, a sympathetic trailer. And I think we're definitely going to see him go ape shit and be evil at some point in the movie. And I don't want to see that in a trailer. And so right. does that make sense? Like you just kind of almost yeah. like, oh, wow, this guy, this poor guy is just getting. You want to see the killing joke on. moment where he where he where he crosses the line. Yeah. Where he, he really want, becomes the Joker. I yeah. want that to be in the theater when I'm watching it. That's when I want to see that. And so I'm just happy about the restraint to where I don't need to see anything else on it, but anything they put out, I'm going to watch, I'm going to look at. But I was really impressed with it. Yeah, I mean, for a teaser trailer, it's pretty long. And uh, I think that's because they, they need to get people invested in what this movie is. And I think the trailer does a really good job of that. You know, even And for me, even I, I was just like, well, we don't need a Joker origin movie and... The Joker doesn't have to have an origin, but this, from the start, has always been its own weird thing. Like, they gave some comic book creators freedom and leeway just to kind of make a book and put the Joker as a character and just do something interesting. And that's how it plays off here. And I'm just, like you said, Lauer, I'm just intrigued to see what, what it is and where it goes. Yeah, I'm in... I'm definitely intrigued. Um, you know, Lauer, I think I was probably even a step further down the I don't need this to you don't I need this. Who I, I <laughs> yeah. I I was, you know, when they when the rumors of this were happening and it was, you know, Todd Phillips was trying to get this done and um or that Warner Brothers was considering a Joker movie, an origin movie. Uh it was how it was first reported. It was still the same time that the Jared Leto Joker was supposed to get the Suicide Squad Joker was supposed to be getting his own movie or a Harley and Joker movie. And, you know, the reception to that wasn't great. Um, You know, at that point, DC uh, Warner Brothers hadn't really had like a, you know, more universally enjoyed and appreciated uh, movie. Mm -hmm. Um, You know, Man of Steel was was uh, about the the as good as it got from that standpoint and i was just like i don't why are you making these bad decisions please stop doing this yeah. i want to like what you do so much and you're not letting me why like this is the absolute wrong choice um and then um you know more information kept coming out other stuff kind of died off the other you know um you know, tattoo joker movie or whatever kind of fell by the wayside and some really big names and big talent was getting associated with the joker movie that we are getting i was like yeah i guess like that's that's i can't believe these people want to be involved like when i saw scorsese for the first time i'm like well this is nonsense this is completely made up <laughs> this isn't actually happening why would he do this um and then it just kept developing and you know laura to your point i kind of got more intrigued as it went along and I I ended up really enjoying the trailer. Um, I thought it was an effective trailer. It was really well done. Uh, to your guys' point, it was restrained enough that it made me wonder what they aren't showing me. Um, like, where is the over-the-edge craziness moments? Um, it did make um, the Arthur Fleck uh, a bit more, um, I don't know if sympathetic. Uh, pathetic, definitely. And Both. you, it elicits emotions towards him. I don't know if it's sympathy or not. Um, I think there's, and maybe that's just me, the way it played with me. But it didn't quite get me. I'm not necessarily a fan of this guy. I'm not rooting for him. I'm, I'm a little disturbed, and um, I think it's awful the treatment that you see the character get. But I, I don't know. If it's sympathetic just doesn't quite feel right to me yet. But we'll see. Um, yeah, and I it, mean, it, it kind of it springboards off of the idea that you kind of see in stories like the killing joke where you see you know he ends up as the joker but then when you see little snippets of his backstory you you kind of do kind of you know sympathize with him a little bit once you see like how did how he got there you know yeah you know you know 
from from what you think could be his origin or whatever. Yeah. So there could be plenty of things in the film that they're not showing us or that more context will, you know, alter what you think. Oh, absolutely. And I assume that's the case, you know, even for a teaser, a long teaser at two and a half minutes, you know, this is probably a two hour movie. Um, so there's our, you know, there's, there's going to be a lot in there. Um, I, I think, you know, I think the feeling that I got out of it a lot was when it worked really well, knowing the character, it, for me, instilled a feeling of dread because <laughs> I'm like, this is going to go bad someplace. Like these yeah. things that are happening to this guy who is, um, you know, seemingly not well, uh, are going to get worse. And part of me, because as Eric uh, has been uh, often to note, I'm a little bit sensitive about my viewing content. <laughs> Sometimes I get this like very, um, very profound feeling of empathy towards characters, and um, like I'm like, oh, 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 things are going to go so wrong for this poor guy that needs help to bring him to where I what I know of the Joker. Um, and then I'm like, wait a minute, I don't know anything about this Joker. This Joker isn't the Joker. This is a Joker. This is a guy, um, mm-hmm. you know, like the like like Philip said, this is a guy that's sick and um, is, you know, marginalized in some way and mistreated and ends up deconstructing or, or, you know, devolving or whatever, you know, the language he used was into a Joker. Um, that's, yeah. And, and I'll... I'll say, and then, sorry, I'll stop talking. I've got a lot of thoughts on this. (laughs) Um, The parts of the trailer that worked the least for me were the ones that were connected the most to the Joker. Capital T, capital J, J, Joker. So when um, Gotham is mentioned, it pulled me out of this trailer. Um, You know, when Arkham State Hospital shows up, it pulled me out of this trailer because... It made it did a really good job of investing me in the story of this guy who something awful is going to happen to and he goes off the deep end and made me feel like it's a movie. Oh, yeah, this is supposed to be about the Joker in some way. And to me, that was less effective than the movie about Arthur Fleck that the rest of the trailer was showing me. Right. See, I'm super intrigued to see how those two things reconcile because you do have Arkham State Hospital. You do have, you know pretty sure that's what thomas wayne on the tv yeah talking about how gotham is gone yeah you know there's all this speculation too well that yeah is is that who that is yeah it it, uh it's he's been cast right yeah yeah. we know that's who that is yep that is that actor and that's that's effed up guys like what's that mean you know uh well yeah i mean the joker encountering bruce wayne like there so i don't know like there's so much that can happen. Like, I just had this random thought in my brain. It's like, what if towards the end of the movie, it's like it just cuts to the Joker and he's like an Arkham and he's just telling and he's like finishes and it was like, oh, it was like a flashback and he was telling the story of how he became the Joker and and then it pans over and he's and it's like the Joker and he's been telling this whole thing to like, you know, Harleen Quinzel or something. Mm-hmm. Wouldn't that be awesome? Yes. Yeah. And it was fake. Like, yeah. that's a thought. Like, yeah. <laughs> that would be. I'm just waiting for something like that to happen. Yeah, that so would be a twist. That the would kid, be a um, really good twist. So the kid cast is young Bruce Wayne as Dante Pereira Olson, and that that was the the boy you see through the through the bars with the forced smile thing. So yeah, I mean the the Batman elements are there. Um, it'll be really interesting to see how they mix in because you know this is not these are not the characters or the take on the characters in that this we are universe used to. An adult stuck his fingers in Bruce's mouth, and Bruce said, I shall become a bat. So this no shall kid, never happen yeah, so to no another kid child has again. An adult put their ha- fingers in their mouth ever again. <laughs> I kind of, I mean, I kind of feel, you guys touched on a lot of the things I, I felt as well. Um, but when this first, this movie was first announced, I was, not only did I not want to see it, I thought it would stink. I'm gonna be honest with you. Well, really, a lot of people did. I mean, yeah. there was a big backlash. <laughs> yeah. yeah. So I really didn't think. I was like, oh, whatever. You know, we don't need it. I get what they're trying to do, but I'm kind of in the place where Garrett is. Like when I watch the trailer, I don't think of him as the Joker. Like I don't think yeah. of this guy as becoming the Joker. And I think the way they titled it was done that way on purpose. It's not called the movie's not called the Joker. It's just called Joker. So. Like, that kind of pulls you out a little bit from the world. Obviously, when you see the references to Gotham City and with Arkham and, like, you see all that, you know where we are. But still, 
it um that was more intriguing when I wasn't like Garrett said like the scenes that didn't have references to Gotham and and stuff from the Batman mythos I pretty much enjoyed more. Uh, I did I did think we had a couple shots of the craziness like when he was dancing in his underwear that one scene. Um, we have a couple of uh references to like okay this guy's clearly beginning to turn or go crazy or whatever. Right. But um. Yeah, I mean, he's the thing for me is this guy is such a good actor. I would watch him in anything. So the the fact that it's a Joker movie is just icing on the cake now. Like when I heard he was attached, I was like, all right, I'm better. When when Scorsese was first attached, that was like my one saving grace. I was like, all right, he's doing it. So it must be good because I've never seen a bad movie from him. So I'm like, it must be good. And then when he pulled the name out, I'm like, uh oh, I immediately thought there was problems or <laughs> we have production problems, issues going on. I immediately thought that. So, uh, no, but this definitely hit all the notes it had to. I think if you weren't interested in it and didn't care, this trailer definitely is going to pull you in. Um, I know plenty yeah. of people who weren't even looking at it and they were like, oh, damn, this Joker trailer. I'm like, yeah. I'm like, even me who was semi interested now, I'm kind of like, all right, let's go. So I'm really looking forward to it, uh, and I hope now where I feel now where I thought it was going to stink, I feel completely opposite. I think it's going to be an incredible movie, <laughs> Oscar worthy, possible. I feel that's the way they're going. So yeah, I mean, here's some story things that I thought thought were interesting, like that they were able to get across across in the trailer is like you have the the voiceover of Thomas Wayne, like who would who what kind of person would do this and wear mm-hmm. a mask and then it sh- has a shot of him like throwing the mask away i thought that was pretty powerful because mm-hmm. it was like him being like i'm still a clown but i don't need a mask i'm just gonna it doesn't matter i'm gonna be this anarchist kind of guy and that's mm-hmm. sp- kind of really speaks to the heart of what the joker is mm-hmm. you know on a um you know spiritual level to a lot of people like in a, and you see the crowds you know with joker masks and joker signs and stuff like that there's been even in things like Gotham, uh, you know, and, and in the comics and Batman Beyond, there's there's this there's this idea of, around like the Joker inspiring people, you know, uh, to you know be anarchists, right? To like mm-hmm. rebel. So I thought that was a kind of interesting thing. And the other interesting thing that I thought was that uh, you get a little glimpse of um, Robert De Niro's game show, or not game show, or talk show host, mm-hmm. and it looks like. At some point in the movie, um, Joker becomes kind of a semi celebrity or like a kind of thing, like a like a comedian, right? And uh, it just made me think of The Dark Knight Returns, right. where Joker is on the talk show and yep. he kills the entire audience. So I wonder if they'll pull <laughs> yeah. some, you know? Oh man, like I did that not. There. Yeah, I did not pull those two I together. Did. That I wow. Did. When you, yeah, I I was gonna mention that. I'm glad you brought that up. I thought the same <laughs> thing. I was like, wow. They were I was like, like oh, I'm like, this is probably bad for who, <laughs> that audience. Well, the way he's entering too, like you see him exactly. like, doing this little, little dance, dance while he's walking into the thing. I was like, oh god. Like he's about to kill everybody. Yep. Yeah. Yep. No. So yeah, like see, you have you do have hints of the the evil, creepy, you know. The evil guy in there. There's, you, there's the trailer does show some of that, or places where you think he might be going, where he could do something. Um, yeah, you know. And for me too, a lot of it was shot in New York, so just seeing a lot of the scenery and I, I it's cool. I'm picking up places like the subway shots. I'm like, oh, I know where that is, and <laughs> you know, you just see certain things, and it's that part for me like attached me to the movie a little more as well. So we're all, you know, at least on board in some fashion for this thing yeah. at this point. Yeah. I think the general think so. consensus is very positive. Yeah. yeah, I think whatever whatever um you know, and this is pretty typical when when things get announced people and it's not exactly what people have in their minds. Backlash is pretty especially from fans is pretty common and and most of us weren't on board. Uh but all it takes is like a good trailer and people are you know, can be swayed. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. So. And you know, it was interesting to me, just sort of in the general, you know, social media arena where I saw the most, um, you know, sort of concern or people in shock or having issues with the trailer were not from um, the general superhero movie fans 
uh, or people that you would, you know, accounts that I normally see commenting on this stuff is a bit removed. You know, there is a lot of concern um, from people thinking that this we're showing a villain in too sympathetic of a light. Like, do we really need right. a movie that makes us feel bad for a murderer? And what does that, you know, does that have a place in culture? Uh, do we should we feel good about that? And, and you know, it was interesting. And I've had my own thoughts on that conversation because it took a number of different angles that I saw online. <laughs> um, but you know, without necessarily getting into all of that, I it it made me stop and say, "Wow, this is sort of really getting into the zeitgeist rather quickly." Like this is permeated yeah. the the uh, the social mm-hmm. ether beyond what I would think, um, and it made you know I wonder what I wonder what WB thinks. I wonder if this is what they are anticipating. Yeah, because this thing landed in a big way, and you've you're getting commentary from you know Twitter, for example, non superhero or comic book fan accounts, um, you know, kind of just getting into the fray, or even like really film you know, devoted accounts, um, getting into this conversation. And, you know, it's, it's th- that type of topic has made a couple different site headlines and maybe sites you'd expect it more, but I just don't, I wonder if they expected this much conversation and for it to have this big of an impact so quickly. It's art, right? That's how I look at it. It's art. So for me, um, that specific when i read people do that and say that i i I mean i hate to say it but i kind of shut down and i don't want to talk to them because (laughs) um yeah because i mean at the end of the day for me this it's it's an film is art and you know you should be able to express and put forth things that are controversial that are you know that do um pull feelings out of people that maybe aren't what everyone wants or aren't warm and fluffy feelings right and, and 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 really, this is it's not like this is the first time the Joker has has been controversial, right? Like, right. Just think about it. Like all the things we talked about today, the Joker from the Batman, Joker from Gotham, Heath Ledger's <laughs> Joker was also pretty controversial at the time. Yeah, you know, yeah. Jared Leto's Joker was very controversial. If you, even if you go back and read, um, people, what people thought of, the, of when Jack Nicholson was cast as, as the Joker, you still saw people that were saying things like. He's not funny enough, you know, like, yeah. like he, because people wanted him to be like the 60s Joker. So, exactly. Yeah. So, yeah, there's, it's just, and this character is kind of like a lightning rod for that. But, uh, but, but like Batman, he, he can wear a lot of different hats and be interpreted a lot of different ways. Well, and, uh, and it, some of them will stick better than others. Yeah. But. And this is certainly isn't the first time we've had. Uh, a movie focused on a bad person, right? Where someone who does very bad things, yeah. <laughs> like The Shining, right? Right. It's like, or it's a little, but, but the thing about it is, it's a little unique in the at, in the atmosphere of of superhero movies that we have today. Yes. Yeah, and yeah. you know, I don't, I don't personally agree with this take, and I think Haas, you might disagree with me, but you know, uh, a lot of people uh, looked at um, the last Avengers movie as being. You know, Thanos was the main character, the villain. He, he is, and he is. Uh, and um, and I think you know we were given a much more sympathetic approach to Thanos than the MCU hinted at. You know, just a couple of movies earlier, or yes. certainly anything that we ever saw in comic books. And this is right. not, yeah, this is not. By the way, uh, Marvel gets away with this, but you know, if DC oh does it, gosh. all the critics. That's well, not no, my no, point. No, no. I'm not that guy. Back on Marvel. Why do you have yeah, to do that's that? that's not that's not my point. That's not my point. I'm just saying, think, even in the world of superhero films, where it's a bit more uncommon, it's not like we haven't seen this within the last what twelve months. And yeah. right. well, or look at Black Panther too. Look at look at what they did with the villain in Black yeah, Panther. Yeah, we've got mm-hmm. sympathetic villains have been largely the villains that have worked to a greater extent in any of the movies you know we would ever discuss right. related to the genre. Um, now, but Joker is typically not one of them. Though. No, absolutely not. That's serious. part of what his you know shtick is. He's the one that doesn't need that. He's the one that doesn't have an origin. He's the one that you shouldn't feel sympathy for. He's the one that is a you know nameless, faceless, cold blooded mass murderer. And yeah, so I that's the Joker in a force but, of nature. Yeah. Villain wise, a, exactly. Villain wise, yeah, I think there's very few. And Joker being one of them, just like in uh, some horror movies, like some of the killers and stuff, it's like there are very few that I believe work of, oh, they work better without 
you understanding their point of view and their side. And I think Joker's one of them for sure. Right. Yeah. yeah I, th- right. I, I agree. I think a hundred and that's, and, and that's Laura, I think that's a little bit of what I'm was with feeling with when it got to be more the Joker. It's when the, when I was pulled out of the trailer and it didn't work quite as well for me because the Joker Batman's nemesis to me absolutely works the best without an origin um, where he is this force of chaos and highly intelligent, highly deadly, morally, you know, non-existent. And I don't want to know what fuels that it doesn't work well for me. Yeah. This right. Arthur so- Fleck story, the trailer for the Arthur Fleck story worked really, really well for me. Um, but that I like it when that's a little bit more disconnected from the Joker and is more Joker. So does everyone like the killing joke? I'm just putting out there. Is this everyone in this group like that? Like, yes. Yeah, okay. I'll give you because a like. Because that's, that's pretty yeah. much... I mean, I'll give it a I thumbs w- up. Yeah. I would say that that's the inspiration for this movie. Um, from my point of view, how I look at yeah, it. Yeah, you can I've, see a lot of in that. Yeah. Like, just he's a, you know, it's not adaptation. Origin of. elements, and he, origin, right. yeah, origin elements, and he's a stand up comedian and some right. shots and stuff like that. Yeah. Yeah. So, yeah. So I think if you like that book, you might like this movie. You're going into it more than someone who doesn't. Um, and who, you know, but this trailer, when I was watching it, that's all the stuff that started coming through my head, too. I was like, wow, yeah, that's a beat from The Killing Joke, and that's a beat from The Killing Joke. And <laughs> I'd like say, just... you know, when it comes to The Killing jo- Joke, I'm more in the camp of can appreciate versus outright like. Mm-hmm. Um, that's, yeah, I was looking for something to say something like that. Yeah. But it, um, you know, I... I appreciate it for what it is and where it stands, you know, in the history of, of, of the stories. And for this movie, you know, not to, not to keep going over the same topic. I think I'll appreciate it for a story of Arthur Fleck and what happens to that dude. Now, maybe we get into the movie. Cause again, we're, it's a lot of, a lot of conversation for two and a half minutes, you know, uh, of a teaser. Well, it's, it's easy to do that for, for movies like this, that you, that you are kind of excited about Absolutely. And see yeah. where they go. And, it's it, it's kind of fascinating to me that the other major Joker origins story that we have on film is Batman eighty nine. Yep. I mean, that's that's your other example, and he, he starts out as Jack Napier and he turns into the Joker. So you get you get backstory. You mm-hmm. see how he turns into the Joker and everything. It's yep. just um, I mean, it's more a little bit more basic. Like he's a gangster and he's got some uh chemistry and art background and he's got kind of goofy you know he's very eccentric you know beforehand right and the and it's almost like the the acid just kind of makes him snap and he kind of just gets to be a little unhinged and and be who he already was but like to the nth degree is kind of how that movie plays out for me it was less about the the acid turning him into the joker it was just like it changed his physical appearance uh, but uh, he, you know, it just enabled him to 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 be himself, his own same personality, but on super steroids or whatever. Um, and I still feel like that worked in a large part because you had Batman along with it. And um, and I was asking this on Twitter today too, like, can you have a story like this? That's how can, can it still be a def, can it be a can it be a definitive story for the Joker if there's no Batman there? You know, my answer is even I I think my answer is no. I mean, it, but uh, it doesn't mean that this can't be an interesting, worthwhile exploration of the character. Yeah, yeah. my definitive Joker story involves Batman. Yeah. See. Yeah, like I think most of us would probably say that. Um. Because, like, they're opposites, right? <laughs> yep. Yeah. Like, well, so yeah, it's just they're they're opposites. Like the Joker exists because oh, Batman. because Batman. Batman's there. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Even yeah. Gotham got that. Well, yeah. Hey! But I was gonna say we've come full circle because how does Jeremiah become the Joker? He gets popped into acid. <laughs> yeah, but he was already cr- well. That so, well, there was that. Know. It was like five things that turned him into Joker, you know. <laughs> That's His true, brother's yeah. magic Joker laughing gas also yeah. turned him into the Joker. Yeah, so. there was a lot of references to the 89 Joker in that. 
You know, yeah. you had the Smilex gas. That's not what they called it, but it was green and it looked exactly like it. Yeah. So like you had all those references. Ace chemicals. Yep. Of course, it's Axis chemicals in the in, in the eighty nine yeah. movie, but yep. Yeah, yeah, I think it'd be very difficult, you know, to have the definitive. Well, first let me stay with this. My my answer is no. Um, you can't. It can't be the definitive take of the Joker because the 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 the, de- the definitive Joker doesn't exist. The, the, you know, the character itself, um, by design, uh, with the creators, as it's been handled as, you know, forget about comics versus movies or whatever. The way that creators have handled the Joker over the years, over the decades of existence, has been that this character does not have a definitive origin. Sometimes people will do a take on the origin, and most often, you know, it's, it's revealed that it was, you know, false or you know a variation of the truth and the actual truth is shrouded much more mystery so like i sort of reject the idea that you can have a definitive joker to begin with and you know and beyond that the character was created as you know the antagonist for batman so um i can i can very much enjoy the movie they're making and the story they're telling but without you know the character for which this character, the Joker, was created to interact with, without that character being present, it's going to be pretty tough for me, and pretty tough just by nature of, of you know, the reason for this character to have been you know brought into existence. Yeah. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. <laughs> well, <laughs> it's uh, it's going to be kind of a wait for October, uh, but. Uh, We'll have we'll have plenty to to keep us busy, you know. Until then, and this is definitely one of those things where, you know, enjoy the ride is a good mantra because it's it's Batman's 80th anniversary this year. There's there's a lot of stuff to kind of look forward to and do, and and it's going to be really interesting to kind of follow this film. And it was it already was interesting to follow this film, and now that we've got our first look, I'm like completely on board oh. and just mm-hmm. excited to see more and more, but not too much. <laughs> Right. All right. So, uh, I guess uh, we should move on to to talking about Shazam. Shazam. Uh, Shazam. By the time this Shazam. Shazam. By the time... Shazam. Shazam. Sorry. Ooh, so many impressions tonight. <laughs> oh so many impressions. So <laughs> by the time this episode is out, um, Shazam will be out in theaters uh, for a wide release, and we have all seen it already. Because uh, we saw it a couple weeks ago at the Fandango early screening type stuff, uh, so I think we've all only seen it once at this point, right? Yes. yes. Okay. So uh, we could talk non spoilers for a little bit, but you know, let's dive in. Let's just dive yeah. in. We're going to talk spoilers. I'm going to say, like, you know, <laughs> if it, it's it's a DC movie, it's Shazam. It's kind of you should know what you're getting. And just go see it. <laughs> That's kind of my non spoiler <laughs> yeah. thoughts on it. Yeah. <laughs> right. You know, like, what more do you want? Did it so uh, did it seem like it could be fun? Did it seem like it might be goofy? You should probably go. <laughs> you know, like, yes. enjoy. That's basically it. Yeah. It will not have Gotham's Joker in it. Go <laughs> yes, see Shazam. It's a, it's I worth, can confirm that. Yeah. yeah. It's oh, worth no, the price spoiler of alert, I guess. Yeah. That's a good point. Thank you. Yeah. Lauer, come so, on. Uh, you know, <laughs> I, so I got to see it early with the Fantango screenings, and I was, um, you know, my expectations were definitely in check because it's not a, a in the realm of Batman too much. I, I didn't have these gigantic expectations. I just wanted to go in, have a good time with it, and have fun. And all the marketing and trailers to that point have kind of told me that that's what to expect from the movie, and, and it delivered on that, and... I don't think it's like it's it's definitely not the worst DC movie, but it's not the absolute best DC movie ever since The Dark Knight Rises or whatever. But it's good and it's fun and it does what it needs to do. Um, and I just think it's a kind of a pretty strong entry, you know, tone, tone wise for the most part. I think it gets its tone down really well, and um, I think that is what puts it kind of in the upper quadrant of uh, successful DC movies. Yeah, I thought 
overall for the movie that it was a lot of fun. I didn't think it was a, a game changer or necessarily broke new ground, but it was a very like it's a very pleasant right. movie experience. It was fun. I went with my fiance who knew nothing about it and just kind of went in because I had said, "Hey, check out the trailer," and I uh, I kind of sent the I sent heard the. I think the second trailer, which kind of skipped the, like the wizard with the, you know, say my name pretty much. It just got into him jumping off the roof as Shazam. And so she got the gist of it. And the theater I went to was actually pretty full. It was more full than uh, my Aquaman. Mine was completely full. Yeah. And the crowd was having a lot of fun throughout the whole thing. And I think they just enjoyed it. And so I, I think like you just said, it it did what it needs to do, but that's not saying anything. That's not meant in a negative way at all. It's just like, hey, here's right. a fun superhero movie. There's different kinds of superhero movies. This one is embracing that it's just supposed to be fun, uh, with some yeah. some serious elements, but like in a in a fun way, not too not too serious, but serious enough. Um, and so I just I just kind of had a blast, and I had a big smile on my face coming out and. I'm ready to see it again. Yeah, I think, I think it feel in a lot of ways it feels like a th- kind of a throwback type of superhero movie, but on steroids for for like the current generation of superhero movies that is so prevalent, you know. And if every Marvel movie had to be way better than the previous one or cross some new bar or break new ground, there would be no ground left to break. Yeah, so. Good and point. I think that this one is kind of made in that same vein. It's like, it's they did what they set out to do, and for me, I think uh, <laughs> I think Eric might disagree with this, but I think um, Shazam himself, I think, uh, has done has done really well. I mean, he's super fun, super charming. It just kind of works, and and he's a little bit more of a kid, more of a millennial type of personality than you know, he's been in some of the comic books and I think some of the more recent ones like the Jeff John stuff is a little bit closer to the way he's portrayed in this, but I think they went even a little bit further with it in this movie. And I think that works because it's realistic. If you just ask the question, what would it, you know, what would it look like if a, you know, teenager just suddenly got to be, become a superhero? <laughs> well, that, I mean, that wasn't that, that specific element wasn't my problem with it. Um, at least not in the beginning. Like when, I, I, first of all, let me say I did like the movie. I don't want people to hear me and be like, "Oh, you hated it." No, I didn't. You hated hate the, the movie. movie. You <laughs> hated it. Eric, you hate DC. <laughs> no, I did like it. It was fun. Everything you guys are saying, it's a fun movie. It's got a lot of heart. Um, there's family elements in it. There's really good stuff in this movie. Um, I liked Mark Strong as a villain. I thought he was great. Um. But for me, there's a point in a movie like this where someone like Billy Batson, who's now turning into Shazam, who's an adult, has a pivot when he realizes, okay, I'm not that I'm a kid, but I'm not that kid anymore. It happened in Big, the same like people keep referencing this to this movie as a uh, right to Big. It happens in Big. I was waiting for that. Maybe that's my own fault. Maybe because that was my expectation that at some point he's going to be like, all right. I'll be more serious because even towards the end when it with the, with the villain battle and uh, the big th- other thing that happens, which I won't say until later, but <laughs> we'll, we'll, we'll touch on that later. But um, like he was still, he's just still too young for me. And I didn't take him seriously at that point. And I think that's the problem I had with it. Uh, and I think Zachary Levi is a pretty good actor. I just thought he pushed it a little too much. And maybe he was directed to do that. I don't know. Maybe that's what they told him. But It's interesting because like for me that that has always been the part of Captain Marvel that I I didn't like is that he's a kid and when he turns into Captain Marvel he's he's suddenly Captain Marvel, man, man. <laughs> and 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 that never rang true to me, you know, okay. watching the character or reading the comic books and so just that they kind of did lean into that a little bit that, Oh yeah, he's a, he tries his best to kind of be put on the superhero front, but, uh, but he keeps slipping back into like what he would naturally do as a kid. And 
I like, thought that, that for me that really worked. We got that stuff from Billy though, like with the stuff with his mom. Um, you got that from him, the more serious side of it, and maybe that was what yeah. they were trying to do too. I don't know, maybe because he at some point in the movie he's like well, an adult almost at certain point, like he reacts to things like an adult would react, but right. not when he's not when he's Captain Marvel, not when he's. And I think maybe maybe and, and that part was, of that is I think that was part of the intention, like he doesn't right. have to worry about the you know the the real world stuff when he's a superhero because he can just kind of because that's what he's doing in the movie he's and he's like skipping school he's just doing superhero stuff right. he's just trying to impress people and just have fun and stuff like that yeah like all that stuff you is get very money. endearing <laughs> yeah <laughs> all that stuff is very guess. endearing like i loved all that part all the stuff where he was with and freddie is great like i loved the kid who played freddie and i loved the character he was great but um yeah, like there's just, that was really the only thing about the film, and because he's the star of the film, it took it it took me out of it a little bit. That's all. That's all I'm saying. But I didn't. It's no in no way did I hate it. I enjoyed it. I had fun there. Uh, you know, and I it's definitely um one of their better films. I'll say that it's definitely up in the yeah one of their better films. Yes, Garrett. Yeah, man. So I, <laughs> I'm trying to think about why I seemingly like this movie more than everybody else that we've talked to about this. <laughs> well, you know, whether it's been that. in like our group group text or whatever. And I, um, man, I might have loved this movie. <laughs> like, I might have, I might have loved it. I, I think I, I certainly liked it an extra lot. <laughs> that's why there you go exactly they need to the use that in their promos i liked it an extra lot garrett, garrett batman Grant. on film yeah he's a yeah I, but it's that's you like that's <laughs> I, yeah, I do to me that's just you that's yeah i like know. to like things um but, so i didn't know if i was going to get a chance to see it um you know i was um the boys were out of school uh we had a vacation planned we were in arizona um, when the date was announced, I'm like, oh, I don't think it's going to work. You know, we got to try and figure out if we can sneak away to a movie um, and leave the boys with uh, my in-laws uh, who are out there in the winter. And um, it, I didn't know if it would work out. We It ended up just by happenstance. Um, you know, something else fell through so we could leave the boys with my mother and father-in-law. My wife and I were going to kind of go out on a day date, which, surprise, honey, now now I wanted to include <laughs> going to a superhero movie that, quite honestly, she wasn't all that interested in. And we found some tickets. Uh, we didn't have to go to the secondary market. There's no black market. Um, but our theater... <laughs> I was going to say, where'd you find them? You're like, we found them. You know, in the, it was at this website. It's Fandango. I don't know if you've heard of it. Um, it crashes sometimes. But uh, the theaters were full. Like, outside Scottsdale. We were, in, we were just outside Scottsdale. And the theaters were pretty full. We ended up getting decent tickets. And we watched it. And, um, you know, I didn't... Talk, we didn't talk a lot or really at all during the movie, but at the end... Well, you shouldn't. I know, because we're decent human beings. <laughs> but at the end, <laughs> I look over, and this is my wife who, you know, really, um, yeah, she likes some of the stuff that we watch together. You know, that's kind of my thing, but it's not really her thing. And she's like, I like this movie so much better than the other ones you make me watch. Like, for once, it's actually enjoyable. Why, you know, why didn't they make people this much Whoa. less depressed and uh, and dark before? And I'm like, you know, you don't need to, you don't need to talk about my my Batman, my Superman like that, honey. But I yeah. know, I I love, I loved it too. <laughs> but you're right. But you're right. <laughs> and I had, I I had such a fun time. Um, the movie really worked for me. On almost all levels, I think there was a little bit of drag pacing wise right at the top of the the um, you know the second chapter. Um, it takes him a while to to get to Shazam to turn into Shazam. And Once you know that what? Happens, Here's the movie picks up a little. I, I loved the intro. I thought I thought the focused open on you know the villain um, was smart, or yeah. you know you don't know really at that point. But I was you, impressed how they opened it up that it, they did that with the villain. Super yeah, was super unexpected. artistic. I really enjoyed it. I thought the whole first act was really strong. I thought the second act just took a little bit uh, a time to get moving, spun its wheels just a bit. And then the third act, man, I, I, my face hurt. My, honestly, my face hurt from smiling. I had so much fun with it. 
um, you know, to me, um, overall, and then we can keep chopping up the details a little bit. To me, this is my, um, it's my third favorite, uh, DC movie of this era. So let's call that, um, from, um, Dark Knight Rises on. This is, this is in third place behind. No, I don't say it yet. We'll do that at the end. Okay. Oh, okay. Rick, Rick style right we'll at the end. We'll do the Rick shoe thing at the end. Yeah. We'll wrap up and then someone will say, wait, real quick. Wait, well, real quick. You got to rank everything. Yeah. Okay. So I liked it. I liked it a lot. <laughs> cool. You liked the extra lot. A whole extra lot. Might have a whole loved extra it. Extra lot. Yeah. So what about the movie? Did um, anything surprise you guys? Anything that you know? I liked seeing um, John Glover at the beginning. I was, I like, was gonna oh, say John Glover. I love John Glover. I got I got extremely giddy. One because it started playing Miss uh, Christmas music. <laughs> so that'll get me right away and then to see John Glover driving and I did I just like oh my gosh it's John Glover which like no I don't know how many people in the theater even did you really do that in the theater none of your business would, Eric that'd be great it's none of your you business that, to be honest <laughs> but yes a little bit a little bit I kept it quiet because I'm respectful to the other people in the theater but there was a little there was a noise we'll say there was a noise anyway <laughs> yeah that excited me too though John Glover. No, no, he, yeah. I mean, I said the same thing. Like, first thing I'm like, oh, damn, it's John Glover. I think most people who ha- have any kind of of history with him in DC yeah. probably said, oh, damn, that's it's John, John Glover. Glover. It's just exciting. Yeah. I mean, I don't know. <laughs> yeah, it was. It was. It was cool to see him. I enjoyed it. It's weird because I watched this panel. I mean, I didn't watch um, Smallville when it was on, but I watched this panel that they that at some con somewhere that they had, and it was he was on it. And man, he is a strange dude. I'm just saying, <laughs> oh. He is a strange man. But uh, yeah, it was cool to see him. I agree. That was cool. I thought that so in taking um, little, little Sivana, right? Yes. yes. Okay. Sorry, Dr. Sivana. Yes. Um, when he was with the wizard, I think in the opening part, like I liked that he kind of got a little prologue. Um, but I thought like yeah. the wizard almost spoke a little too slow for me to where i'm like okay come on just pick it up just a little bit more just a little bit more i remember i got a little anxious with him uh in his scenes just because i want i talk a little faster don't pick on amistad that's not cool pick on why'd you got to make it weird <laughs> why are you picking on amistad <laughs> um I mean, that's like a minor thing. It's not like it obviously didn't ruin it or anything. I just know at the beginning, I was like, all right, come on. Let's talk a little. Fa- come on. Come on. Let's go. I mean, all the training montage stuff is just gold. You yes. know, Freddie Freeman and just trying to give him hints and tips. And when they're skipping school, trying to figure out what his powers are, like all that stuff was just so much fun to watch. Yeah, because uh, so maybe that was a big a big part. And I was really happy to, happy with the marketing and the restraint and for them in that as well and how much they didn't show because right. like I was just kind of led to believe like, oh, they're going to have this little montage like you saw in the trailer of test flight, you know, number one and then this number one. And then it was like, no, right out the gate when he turned into Shazam and he tried, you know, he tried jumping off the car and then he was quote unquote invisible. But then it's like, oh, and we haven't even gotten <laughs> to the part of him trying the other stuff. And the way that they, I thought the, like, you know, placement of those scenes throughout it was like oh great it's it's spread out it's not just like oh this is the three minutes where he tries all this stuff and then moving on yeah there's a progression to yeah it. yeah like that was that was surprising and that was also fun experiencing that it wasn't it was just paced really well i'd, I'd say that about the humor in general because i think mm-hmm. you know by the time we got the last trailer there was a lot of concern around um okay they're going for this tone but did they give away all the funny bits? And no, like I, right. I, I thought it, I thought the humor worked. I laughed a ton. Um, it was it was really enjoyable. And for seemingly giving so much away, you're right. I think the amount of restraint that they actually had um, compared to the content that's in the movie was pretty remarkable. Yeah, well, yeah. It's definitely not like a BVS situation where everything in the trailer really is. All of the movie <laughs> it is yeah. You, I don't want a trailer that's the abridged version of the movie. Yeah, Oof. 
Yeah, the stuff when they're trying to figure out what name to give them. Oh, that was so good. Oh, yeah. It and it keeps going, and it's yeah. great. And it plays on so <laughs> many levels. Yeah. And I, I, you know, I didn't entirely realize it until I was walking out of the theater. Like, they never really named him. Captain oh. Sparkle Fingers was that as was close the as they one, got. Yes. <laughs> and <laughs> it was, was like the last one. such a great thing. And my, my wife actually asked me, she's like, so, because I mentioned, like, I'm like, yeah, so. I mean, how many people are in Philadelphia in that universe of the movie going, man, Captain Sparkles really saved the day, or Sparkle Fingers. And she's like, yeah, they never really gave him his real name, huh? I'm like, well, honey, interesting you should mention that because here's this long, drawn-out history of the lawsuits between (laughs) DC and Fawcett and Marvel. She's like, And, oh, you've fallen asleep on me. Yeah, she's like, this is why I don't ask questions. This is why I don't ask questions. Although I think... This is why I'm... My husband talks about uh, comic book movies uh, with friends that he's made on the internet and records it for other men to <laughs> listen to other people talk about comic book movies based on friends they, they met on the internet talking about it. Sleep. Exactly. Yep. <laughs> um, when the YouTube postings at one point and they were, and they were showing comments um, for the training, they did have a captain something, but I did not see what followed. It didn't look like it was a... You know, like it wasn't Sparkle Fingers or anything like that. But I did see a captain, and I didn't have, I wasn't quick enough to see what followed that. And I was, I was wondering, how does he get labeled at the end in the credits? Does it say Shazam like Billy Batson slash Shazam, or does it just say Billy Batson? Or I don't know. I think it does say Captain Marvel. I think. Look, pay attention to that next time we see it. Yeah, I'm gonna try and see it again. Maybe even this weekend. I mean, I some of the tone nephew. stuff, like I was saying, like, the tone is 95% solid, and it is, but there are a few, like, moments where I thought it was too, too, a little too dark or a little too goofy, like, when he's towards the end, like, uh, when Savannah's making his villain speech and Shazam can't hear him, he's like, I can't really hear what you're saying. Well, I, I thought that went on a little too long. It was yeah. a little yeah. too silly. Um, a, a bit. And then, uh, I, you, and then on the other hand, I thought, like, uh, the uh the office scene where you see the silhouettes oh, man. of all the people getting ripped to shreds by the the deadly yeah like <laughs> that that scene is going to prevent some parents uh, yeah. from taking so, their kids hi my <laughs> name's Garrett and it's going to prevent me from taking my kids <laughs> uh, um I, but like the 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 moment uh about you know the the long distance conversation i thought was kind of nice it, it probably could have been trimmed a bit um just a bit yeah. but it, yeah. I thought it was a unique way of establishing um, power limits for the character. Like we've sure. got, we know bullet immunity and flight and you could throw laser or lightning bolts, um, but he doesn't have super hearing, right? Like it kind of was right. a little bit <laughs> of, of a piece of, all right, this is where some of the lines are drawn for this character. So I thought it, it served well there. Well, it's it's funny too because it's it's calling out something that, I mean, now it, me and watching a superhero movie, I'm I, I'm sorry, I'm going to think of the hero and the villain. I'm like, how close are you? Can you really hear each other? Can you really hear what each other's saying now? <laughs> yeah. Um, but I agree that I thought that did like I liked it. It made me laugh, but it also did go on just a little a little too long there. Um, but that's okay. The third act itself, which we can get to the whole, the big part of the third act. Yeah, we should get into um, that. One surprising, but also my my knowledge on Captain Marvel's history like is non-existent. I read the Jeff Johns and Gary Frank story, but that's it. So I don't know about other characters at all. Um, I thought that kind of, it's weird because I felt like that all kind of went on just a little too long, but yet I was entertained. But I still thought, like, this is going on right. a little too long. But this is fun. Okay, they can wrap it crazy. up a little bit. The crazy thing about his history is, like, you think of all these um, superheroes that have had their own cartoons. And I would you would never think him off the top of your head, but he did. He had his own cartoon. Uh, which is, you know, kind of crazy. Just think, I was just thinking about that sitting here. I'm like, wow. I'm thinking of everyone who had a cartoon. And he had it. But, the uh, yeah, the third act... Um, we get uh, the Shazamly. The Shazamly. Yes, we get the, the Shazamly, which um, some it was spoiled for some people. 
I know. But yeah, like if you yeah. like if you go um, targets toy aisle. Even if you go, <laughs> yeah. yeah, if you look at the toys, like the toys will spoil it right away, and you'll be like, right. oh, what? Wait, what the hell? You know, but right. but I wasn't. Thank God, I wasn't spoiled, and and I was super impressed that they didn't put that in the marketing or mm-hmm. anything. Like, right. they, obviously, they didn't need to because the movie was strong enough by itself. But right. uh, but the fact that they were able to keep that a secret and have all those people cast and have the whole Shazam family like cuz i thought like maybe this would happen maybe you'd see one of them like in a post credit scene or something mm-hmm. and maybe in the next movie they'll all get to do it but the fact that they put all of them in this movie i thought was great and you feel like i know i you feel great for freddy at that moment right cuz oh, oh yeah. my gosh <laughs> i guess you're building it up through the whole movie and you yeah. don't think that it's ever really going to happen i right. I, yeah. I was like i was amazed I was absolutely amazed just because the logistics behind keeping that under wrapped were so yeah. impressive. That's insane. I, yeah. Really insane. Really well done. Um, I think it's an absolute shame that some people uh, got spoiled on that. I get the toy stuff. Um, I used, I worked for Target for years and I know, you know, for so retailers with toys and stuff, they're, those things are street data. They're supposed to be segregated in the storeroom. So the fact that some of those. And you can't really get, you know, away from the spoilers. Like I just saw an article today that was like, guys, the build a bear version of Thanos from Endgame <laughs> might spoil something about the movie. And I'm like, oh crazy. God. It's crazy. And the fact that the fact that they pulled it off was amazing. Um, I was, <laughs> you know, like I said, I'm, I, I'm pretty empathetic when I watch movies. I was so happy for Freddy. <laughs> like I was, oh, it was great. I was emotionally moved for Freddy. Uh, I thought that was absolutely great. And, um, I was really, really happy that we got Adam Brody, yep. uh, in a DC movie, yeah. you know, Adam Brody, yeah. um, you know, pretty famously cast at this point as the flash and justice league mortal, which was never to be, uh, I've always, I've always actually enjoyed Adam Brody's work. I was a big fan of, uh, Fox's the OC back in the day, uh, with Ben oh, McKenzie with Jim Gordon. of, of yeah. commissioner Gordon, uh, Gotham fame. <laughs> um, so that was, I thought a nice little treat. Um, and actually, gosh, it's escaping me now. The actor D- DJ Katron. Yeah. Was cast as Superman and that as well. So it was nice to get yeah. those two guys in a DC movie kind of, uh, uh, it, it, I mean, that's sort of like in, that's some inside baseball right there. I think it, it feels like that was maybe intentional. Um, but, Maybe not. Who knows? But it was a nice little treat for anyone that followed the production and and, and non-production of that movie. <laughs> yeah, the non-production. Yeah, Megan Good plays. Um, yeah, that was cool. A, yeah, it was cool to see Megan Good, and I haven't seen her in something in a while, so it was cool to have her in the movie. But yeah, that part was and they actually... all and they all like worked like they all yes, just like uh, they just worked as like oh this is because you spend. It's very subtle how much time that the movie lets you spend with with, with those, the other kids. With those kids, man. Yeah, and then you kind of get to know them subconsciously throughout the movie, and then when they all get their Shazam, you know, counterparts, it makes total sense. And the actors they all picked did a great job of like making you feel like oh that they're that they're the same people. I love yeah. I love the family. I, I love the group home. Um, yes. It was it was it was really heartwarming. Like there was a lot of fun and heart in this movie, as we've said. Um, but you know, and I know I've talked about my wife a lot with this, um, but it was like the best superhero related conversation maybe I've ever had with my wife. <laughs> and um, she said, she goes, I, she really, really, really loved the Foster Group Home, and she goes, I feel like the other um, DC movies that you've had me watch, like that wouldn't have been like that. It would have been like a neglectful house and very, you know, like a really rough negative environment. And it was nice to see this like positive loving couple bring in these kids and care for them. And I, it was, it was very, very nice for me. Well, if what we're hearing about the Reeves film comes, she's not seeing that with you. I'm sure yeah. if that comes true. Yeah, probably, <laughs> probably not. Yeah. Well, cause, and I'll say, you know, we, we touch on this a, a bit, there were moments that kind of like stuck out and felt a little out of place. Um, and I think the boardroom scene was the one where she's like, but that boardroom scene, like that was over the top. She was very disturbed by the seven deadly yeah. sins, like very disturbed. And um, it is the reason why I don't get to take any of our kids to see the movie. And yeah. I, I, 
you know, I would probably say, you know, my six year old, I could bring and distract during the, like, I'm clearly chomping on this lady's head right now. Part of that scene. Um, (laughs) but it, it, they, I thought they were effectively done. There's been some comments about the CGI not being incredible (sighs) and I can see it in spots. I thought it was perfectly serviceable and better than serviceable. Um, but you know, the seven deadly sins and my viewing experience with the audience I was with, uh, with my wife, you know, commenting on it directly were very effective. Yeah. I, I don't know anything about the seven deadly sins in Captain Marvel. So I didn't like, I had nothing. And then when they came alive and whatnot, I was like, Oh, this is, this is interesting because for me, it, it definitely could have been like, how much they're used is gonna like then I'll, I'll withhold judgment until i see how much they're used because if they become like such a huge part of the movie and we get a ton of them then it'd start to take me out of the movie i think but i thought that they were used effectively and with enough time and yeah that boardroom scene um one i loved uh gluttony because he was just this big tub of lard <laughs> like in the background he's like eh. And so I'd laugh whenever they'd show him. But yeah, which I don't know which one bit the woman's head off, but I, that that surprised me. I didn't think that like, oh, this that was not needed. It just kind of surprised me of like, oh, wow, that's definitely going to be a little like, oh, like you just said, Garrett, of like you can't take your kids because of that part itself. But it's like I don't – it didn't bother me to where I needed them to take it out. I just – yeah, it just kind of surprised me. Uh, but I, they really reminded me for some reason, they gave me a vibe of like, of Ghostbusters in the eighties, especially yeah, in like that's when fair. ones would be yeah. like dur, 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 talking and stuff too. And I'm like, Oh my gosh, this is such Ghostbusters where I found it more fun than threatening or scary. Well, I'd say, you know, tone wise, I don't think that's, I think that's a pretty solid comparison too, because, um, Ghostbusters, you know, uh, had a lot of fun, had a lot of, you know, a little bit more lighthearted elements to it. But, um, you know, that's a movie that's got some real scares to it and a little bit more, you know, the ghost uh, design was more grotesque and threatening. And they dialed that back in the sequel because of the popularity of the animated show. Um, But, like, I think, you know, where... um, Oh, gosh, guys. uh, Sandberg, director and Blanken, Sandberg, right? Mm -hmm. Um, Where he's kind of spoken directly to this 80s, you know theme feel amblin was thrown out but ghostbusters um i throw in there goonies i felt quite a bit where hey this is uh this is fun and it's kind of lighthearted and it's a bit focused at kids but movies in the 80s kid focused movies or movies that kids were watching definitely had darker elements and a yep. little bit more real fear factor than you see certainly in kids movies today and Definitely. that callback was, you know, there for me from a from a stylistic thematic choice. Yeah, no, I definitely I would, I'd agree with that. Like Goonies is a good one. Uh, Goonies had a lot of, um, you know, scare in it, especially when you're a kid. Yeah. So yeah, I mean, it looked like the CG. I think did did didn't hold up as well as I wanted it to, but it did kind of evoke like like the Ghostbusters like. Uh, you know, animatronic monster movie kind of vibe to me because they're all like unique silhouettes, but they're also very like similar in terms of what, you know, what they, how they look, you know? So, uh, but yeah, serviceable, serviceable for sure. And I think that they, they did their job and, and for the most part, the effects are, are pretty darn good, especially considering that the budget of Shazam yes. is quite a bit lower than things like Aquaman, and that, you know, or Justice League. And that was going to be I my think- point. I, don't, I can't remember um, which one of you, lovely gentlemen, said that you know they don't th- they didn't think it was necessarily any groundbreaking you know achievement with this movie, and I, you know I, I would disagree just a bit because I think the groundbreaking factor for me is that you can make a big superhero movie on a less than big superhero budget. Like this movie yeah. your reports are, you know, it's called $85 million budget. And I think, um, man, every single dollar ended up on the screen, it, which is amazing, you know, and it, and it speaks to the, the direction that uh, Walter Hamada has had 
um, coming, you know, out of New Line, coming out of the horror business, the directors they've chosen, these directors, horror directors, a lot of times know how to get, you know, every penny to show on screen, you know, from the budget that they're given, the use of effects, the, the, the performance and sort of the, um, the concept over maybe what we're used to from, we're just going to throw all the spectacle on the screen all the time for most of the runtime with the biggest version of everything, like really well executed. Um, so that I think as this movie does well at the box office, you could see a game changer or a groundbreaker um, in the approach going forward where you can have a 700. I, I mean, that's, I'm going to guess 700 plus maybe $800 million motion picture event motion picture that's done on a budget like this. And, you know, we'll see where they go with the sequel, but for the first entry with this character, that was very smart and a great way to go. Well, that was a good, uh, yeah. like a pairing with director of David, David Sandberg, because I mean, he did two horror movies as well. And both of them were pretty low budget. Annabelle creation was like 15, 15 million. And then he did Lights Out, which I don't know, was a couple million dollars. And both of them were really successful. And so it just kind of it paired well, I think, too, of you've got the boss who's used to horror and, hey, use every single penny. And then you have the director who's using every single penny and making it count. So I think right. that was just a good no, pairing. No, yeah. And it's not a one to one. It's not a one to one comparison. But but, uh, you know, we were just talking about Joker it's it's a significantly lower budget than most movies yeah. but and because it's not it's it's not as effects heavy obviously but uh but it is nice to see that it's the budgets of these things is something yeah. that that uh, wb is lo- starting to be a little bit more conscious of they and, can take uh, the risks it could they can take a little bit more risks with the storytelling exactly rather yeah. than having them have have to be overproduced spectacles that might not turn out um the way that everybody wants them to and the last two DC films were done by horror directors, pretty much, right? Juan and now, right? Yeah, and so maybe they're onto something. <laughs> maybe they're onto something uh, going forward with having horror directors direct uh, these big superhero movies. So I jotted yeah. down a few questions. So you guys let me know when I can ask some questions. Go ahead. Do it. Boom. All right, so the first part, when Billy was in... So where do you want to call it for the wizard's uh, shack? Yeah. Rock of Eternity? <laughs> yeah. Uh, yeah, that's what it's called. Yeah. You know, let's say Shazam's shack. I like that. Uh, <laughs> when he was kind of... So, because it's been, you know, a week and a half since I've seen it. But he's kind of telling Billy of, like, he's given the powers to somebody before, and it was kind of shown this recreation... Do you remember this? Mm-hmm. Right. It's insinuated that he's not the first yeah. captain. Did you pick Shazam up at all that maybe fingers. that was Black Adam or no? Oh, yeah. <gasps> like, I'm, oh, I, yeah. I'm, I I'm, thought... I'm genuinely just asking because I, th- I instantly, oh. that's where my mind went of, oh, he gave the powers to somebody before and that person abused him. And I'm like, is that Black Adam? Yeah. I, I, I just always thought that that was like absolutely the intention. Okay. I might have read too much into it. You did not I because I that. thought of that. So Garrett, boom. High five. <laughs> well, I don't know Black yeah, Adam's no, origin. I... And right. I don't know that we'll ever see it because see how... Dwayne Johnson's been cast as Black Adam for 19 years and we still haven't seen him. So <laughs> hey, I don't know he if makes we'll ever get all his the movies. Maybe he'll yeah. be in too. Time then doesn't then. affect Dwayne The Rock Johnson. As That's it does right. the rest of us. There are no scheduling conflicts for That's Dwayne true. The Rock Johnson. He doesn't get older, that's for sure. So. So, yeah, but the dude just gets more ripped. I same, I know, it's crazy. Oh, yeah. uh, steroids. Anyway, continue. Um, <laughs> okay, well, so when do you think that we'll get Black Adam? Oh. In Shazam 2. Yeah, I think he'll be the villain in Shazam 2. I think it gets announced um, yeah. sooner rather than later. You know, yeah, if the box office proves to be what I think we all think it will be. And I wonder, I, from there, I don't know what they're going to do with the character. I doubt they're going to want to use someone like The Rock just as a one-off No, because he villain. he wanted to have his own movie. Yeah, I remember that. He wanted Cavill. Right. Yeah, but then it got, no, then it got we'll shelved and put on hold. But, and you know, yeah. Rotten Tomatoes, Shazam, certified fresh. It's like 93%. It's definitely one of the 
one of the highest rated DC it is. films there oh. is. Yeah, that's. I think it's even. That's even higher than Wonder. I was gonna say. I think it is. Right. Mm-hmm. I don't know. Which is crazy. Somebody called the Google. <laughs> yeah. How could we Google, ever find what this? What is out? Wonder Woman? Wonder Woman is also ninety three percent. So it's the same as Wonder Woman. Yeah. Uh-huh. Yeah. No. I and I get that. I think. I mean, I'm just starting to believe that people want these fun, lighthearted hero movies. Like that seems to be where we are as a society now. So I'm not surprised that critics, especially, have taken to this movie um, so well. And again, it's good. I don't think it's 93 percent good, but it's good. Well, I don't. I would even say right. I would agree with it, that. It, it's not necessarily like we want. We just need them all to be fun. It's like we need the story. We need the the um, oh what did, the tone to match the story. Well, I, I think, think it's a little bit and of so sure. Ba- Batman doesn't need to come out and match Shazam's tone. It's like he's an exception of like well, his t- his tone is is darker and like more mature. That's uh, granted on your take and your preference of Batman, but I think what's worked the most in live action has been a more mature and a little bit darker tone but it's like shazam truer to character yeah, I, yeah there you, you know. go and shazam doesn't need that and so i'm just they match the tone of the character and this the tone of the story and this is what it and i think the response has been really really good for this aquaman didn't need a dark serious tone it kind of matched the tone to that character and that had success so i think as long as that's their focus then like it's all good well, with Batman, it's always been an issue. Even in '89, and and with Batman Returns, people complained it was too dark. Like '89, there was complaints back... that it was too dark. Oh yes, you were alive yeah. back oh, yes. then. Most of us weren't. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> oh, wah, wah, wah. oh I mean, yes. it was still it still was still a very successful film, though. It, it was the first yes. three. The first three yeah. were very successful. Oh, there was. I think there was definitely. Um, yeah, I was young, um, but I was I was old enough to see it in the theater. But my parents definitely needed to go see it first based on yeah. um, everything that was being talked about. You know, this was a, 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 a markedly darker approach than, you know, the 66 series was. I mean, think about this. Like, it's only like 22 years yeah. before filming began. Right. Yeah. Like, that's not that long. I was thinking about that the other it's, day. And that's it's not that long. That's at pretty all. nuts. Yeah. yeah. It's it's crazy. Looking back, it feels like you know the '66 series was this long, long ago approach to Batman, well, where it was campy. Not to but really, there wasn't much in between either. So the the impression was Adam West I mean, it's is Super that's Friends, Batman. right? We talked about Super that's, Friends. Yeah, that's as that gap between '66 and '89 is is almost is pretty much the same a period of time between like Batman Forever and like now. Yeah, <laughs> that's crazy, <laughs> and that's that blows my mind. Yeah. Yeah. But to me but, uh, it's it's yeah, it's it's not that absolutely agree. Um and I think this goes to slate. Actually a- absolutely agree around um the tone should match the character. But I think it goes to the slate of movies that um DC and Warner Brothers um would be smart to make. And that's, you know, you can you can have a lot of salty, but every once in a while you're going to want some sweet. And if you have too much sweet, you're probably going to want something salty. You yeah. know, it's it's variety yeah, is the spice of life here. And and M and M's, right? What a combination. Yeah, Just and for real. And so there's an audience for the lighter fare. There's an audience for the more uh, serious, if that's what you want to call it, fare. Um, and it's it's smart business, and I think it um, inspires more artistic crea- create creativity. Sorry, if you allow the space for both. No, I I definitely agree with that. I think you have a, uh, you know, and also you want to make the characters endearing. I think that's another thing I think you want. Um like most people with Batman, they feel bad Bruce Wayne was a this parents were killed when he was a kid, right? So the part of it is you feel bad for this guy who's putting himself through this because of what happened when he was younger. Like you have it's an endearing thing for that character. Um and you know Wonder Woman's about hope, so you know that's in that's Superman's ass. Yeah, come on, Eric. <laughs> why do you why do you not know DC, Eric? <laughs> well, no, I mean both. It, for, it fits for both characters, obviously. But the Superman that we got recently, no one liked. They didn't like his face. Right? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Yeah, we didn't talk <laughs> about didn't the, like his face in Justice. <laughs> we didn't talk about the Superman mustache pick that made its way. Cameo. Oh, online. I skipped over that in the sort of 
pre-story news chatter. Mm-hmm. Well, we could all. Yeah, I mean, we could talk about what. I mean, it was leaked before about the Superman appearance in Shazam, and there is one. Uh, <laughs> yeah. yeah. So, so know. for me, it, his head gets I cut think, off. Yeah. yeah. Well, well, so that'd be if people... Snyder directed it. Is you know that would be fun. <laughs> his head didn't get cut off. It just wasn't in screen. It Zod wasn't in pulled frame. it off. How do you know? Um, yeah. I guess that's why everybody's staring because they're like, "Oh my god, that's <laughs> Superman without his head." So, like, so, Superman with a mustache. This is odd. Yeah, or a weird CG face. for us nerds, and then other nerds like listening to this. It's like we know the reason why his head was chopped off. But in my theater, it got the reaction for what the director was going for, what Warner Brothers was going for, where it's like, it didn't matter who was yeah, in that yeah. suit, because there right. was, like... Now, I will say, everybody like, the way it plays, yeah, the way it plays in the movie, I think, is yeah, fine. Yeah, totally. And it, it, it comes across to me like a, almost like a Charlie Brown kind of thing, where it's like, wah, 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 wah. it's the punchline, yeah. wah, 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 you know, you don't have to see his face. It just kind of, it's kind of like makes it funnier that you don't. It's 100% funnier. Just, yeah. Everybody, everybody is seeing, like, re, you see everybody's reactions, but you don't see Superman's face. So it makes sense. But, uh, and I would be 1000% behind it if I knew that. Henry Cavill was still Superman, and we were getting more Superman. Yeah, movies, absolutely, but the mm-hmm. fact that that we're kind of not, and we don't know what's happening, makes this like not great for me. That this could be like the last time we see that version <laughs> of Superman. So my my preference, my personal preference, is absolutely that we would be getting more Superman um, solo or solo ish movies. And for that reason, I would have liked it to be Henry Cavill visibly, um, or Henry. Cavill at all instead of a you know muscular stand-in um, but for the purposes of Shazam itself I thought it worked so much better the way they did it because yeah. it was it was the punchline to a joke it was uh, hey Freddy um, loves Superman and Freddy is desperate to like get himself out of this tight spot by proving that he knows superheroes and um, you know save some face or whatever and then you know Captain Marvel shows up and oh here's this extra fun little bit that's kind of a a wow moment for that character and if it was you know full you know six foot however many inches Henry Cavill walking in you know with his presence I don't know I don't think it would have played the same in the version you know from reports the version that did have um, you know Cavill film um, the cameo was different. There was dialogue. Who knows how that would have played, but I thought this worked really well for the way they did this scene in this movie. Yeah. Oh, and they're not handicapped yeah. for something else. Like no. whether they want Cavill to come back or if it ends up being somebody else, it doesn't really matter. They got the S. Right. That's all that really mattered. As my theater showed, that's all that mattered because everybody just clapped and was like, oh, my right. gosh, Superman. Well, and, and, you know, we said we, yeah. we said for us nerds and for the nerds that listen to a podcast about this stuff, but let's also uh, take a moment to, to acknowledge that if you're going to see this movie two weeks early at a special event, you're probably kind of nerdy too. Yeah. And um, I would assume we're going in with, you know, some knowledge of the character. And I, uh, my wife had to use the restroom afterwards and I stood waiting for her and eavesdropped on people's conversations <laughs> and no one was talking about why wasn't Superman's face in that scene? Yeah. It was like, of course. it was, oh, so. Because it was intentional. I mean, the way it's right. shot yeah. it looks right. completely you, intentional. You wouldn't have to know. But if I guess my point was, if you're if you're going to the, the two weeks early screening, I, I assume you followed some of this stuff. And whether you were aware of that point, you know, to that level or not, it played. And the conversations were, is he going to be in the Justice League now? The real conversation that I ever heard. Um, or, oh, okay, cool. So is he going to interact with Superman? Or he's, you know, it, it was along those lines. It wasn't like, Oh yeah, it was a stand-in, or you know, why didn't they show his face, or whatever else it it could have been if it wouldn't have worked. Yeah, it, I, like you guys said, it worked for that scene. It was perfect. Like I don't, I think you're right, I, Garrett. I think you're right. I think if if we did see his face, it might have been, it might have taken the focus off the movie. It wouldn't have been as funny. Right. Like that was a fun, right. funny yeah. moment. Yeah, yeah, it was. It was good. It was good. But I mean, yeah. and you saw the react, like Freddie's reaction. So you got what you wanted. I think from that part, like that, you saw oh, yeah. his face, right? So you knew that's what you wanted at that point. And, uh, yeah. 
Yeah, it, w- it worked well. I mean, obviously, it's the same suit, so whoever was wearing it, <laughs> it's the exact same suit that we, we, we've got to see. So Yeah, Justice League suit. Yeah. Yeah. And the movie, you know, it keeps on giving. You get that at the end, and then you have a mid-credits and post credit scene. The post credit scene at the very end, like... Is, was already kind of spoiled in some of the marketing. Yeah, which really surprised <laughs> he talks me. About Aqu- <laughs> which was really strange to me. It was like the they talk, they're talking about Aquaman, but the but the mid credit scene I thought was really cool, where they kind of introduced Mister Mind. Yeah, and that I was that not. Also, my question is, what the hell know? is up with the caterpillar? That's Mister Mind. <laughs> What's yeah. Mister Mind? Mind controlling caterpillar. Okay. Evil what, the, so caterpillar. It sounds yeah. like he's a very known character in the Mister Captain Marvel mythos yeah like every time bill and in, in bof vlogs talks about shazam he's like they need to they need to bring in more shazam characters they need to bring in Takitani and mr mind and you know Takitani is the tiger mr mind is this is this caterpillar mm. and Taki, <laughs> so Takitani had a uh had a cameo in cameo. stuffed animal form the stuffed in, animal uh, yeah in the carnival scene i thought that was so what's was mr nice. mind do like yeah. in, the, in the comics what's he known for like what's a big thing that he's done that you can even think of I Nothing. can't think of anything. Okay. I just know that he's an evil caterpillar. Did he turn into an evil butterfly at no! some point? I mean, this is this is a ways back. This is this is probably what do you want to say? Well, I guess I shouldn't. I sh- uh, he hasn't been in the the more modern Captain Marvel or Shazam stories that I've read. But I haven't read. You know, I think I said a couple weeks ago. I'm I'm not well versed in the new Fifty Two. Aren't they bringing him into the new Jeff Johns? Oh, he feels like a total series. Jeff Johns. You know, rebirth, post rebirth. We're pulling all the continuity together. Yeah. type character for sure. Like prime to make that yeah. kind of appearance. He's a telepath. He's from Venus. Makes sense. Uh, apparently, there's a there's a race of Ven- Venusian worms. Venetian. No, not Venetian. Uh, those are blinds. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, not Venetia, no. I'm trying to see. I'm actually looking it up. See what he's done that's of note. Um, You're cheating. Not much. He has been. He was in a Brave and the Bold episode. I know that. That also makes sense. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, <laughs> yeah he's like in the same vein as the uh, mixture. Yeah. Mixed as Pitalik or a Batmite or a, or a really strange, really strange villains. <laughs> so right. I, I've talked a lot about what worked for me in the movie and that was most of it <laughs> you know i've been pretty enthusiastic i will say um you know for for a little bit of criticism for me i thought the the subplot about um you know about billy finding his mom didn't quite work i wasn't i didn't necessarily understand the mechanism yeah. that they were trying yeah. to employ there and i think i think it's it's signaling freddie giving up the idea of his old family as a way of embracing his new family. Yes. But I don't think it yes. was needed. Like, I think the right. the genuine care you got from his parents, the evolving relationships with the foster siblings, like, that choice could have stood on its own. I, I don't know. He could have made the choice by himself. Right. Like, I'm going to stop looking. Yeah. Because that doesn't I, matter I, to me. I'm going to... I think... Yeah. Like, and I didn't... I didn't I, it just felt like at the end of the movie, looking back on it, we spent a whole lot of time with the gum shoeing, and then for it to be, oh, I didn't really want you, and I don't really want you in my life now. It was like, uh, uh I, not that it just didn't. It felt kind of yucky, <laughs> but also it just it felt like a whole lot of time invested in something that didn't quite seem necessary, and for me didn't work as well as some other bits that maybe I would have liked a little bit more of. Well, I it's funny you mentioned that because I was going to say that too, and I was fine with it up until he went and he actually found her, and she basically, you know, kind of said of, oh, it's because I didn't, didn't want you or whatever, and I was like, oh, that's kind of sad, and it seems like from there, they just, like, snapped their finger, and it was, all right, that's done. Let's move along. There was no kind of, like... I don't know if that was when he went to the roof and ju- no, was that when he went to the roof and jumped off? I think so. Yeah, yeah think so, it is. so it's that like was. immediately cut from that to Shazam, and he's taken off because- again. And I was like waiting for because it seemed like the foster parents went out looking for him, and I'm like, oh, a good capper to this 
to, for an impact in my, in my mind as it was playing out was he goes down to them and has a quick moment of like acceptance of their position or something like that. And I think that serves as a good moment. And then he takes off to go save the day because it's like, oh, no, nobody else is here. But instead, it's like bypass all of that. And it's just back to super heroics. And I think that's where it left me a little like, oh, this kind of feels like you're building up to something that didn't, you didn't stick the landing. And you just kind of were like, all right, it's over. Let's move on. Not that I needed some big, some big moment with tears and all that serious yeah, crap, if, but you know, if yeah, if anything, it felt like we didn't need the big moment with the mom. Mm-hmm. Like that, it felt like no. I think you did. That was gonna. Like, I I I think you needed something with the mom because that's what the movie, how the movie started, and <laughs> I think um, that's what he was doing. Like he was looking for his mother, and that's what his goal was at that point. So I think they had to close that loop somehow. Now the execution of it. Yes. You can definitely argue probably didn't do much um, to satisfy that because it was kind of quick and it kind of just leaves it and you don't really know what's going on or what, how he really, I mean, obviously he walks away and he looks sad, but to me, even when he was talking to her, he was kind of like, well, I just wanted to see you again. Like, it was just very the the that motivation and that part of the payoff was kind of weird too. Like you, I would have thought he would have been like, "Wow, mom," you know. But it just it needed to be there for me just because that's how it started. If they would have just left it, I don't. I would have been like, "Okay, what happened with yeah, the mom?" Yeah, true. I think you said <laughs> yeah. in the execution that yeah. so that that's yeah that's the best part for me is uh, they just need to wrap that part up a little better and then I'd have been fully satisfied. Right. So. Let me, and then my last, my last thing here is kind of like, where, where do you think they go next with Shazam? And then do you think like that the kids are going to grow out of it too fast? I think it depends on how soon they make the sequel. And I wouldn't imagine they would spin their wheels too long, two or three years max, hopefully two, um, but clearly, they're not dumb with Savannah, or and they've got Mister Mind yeah. coming, and hopefully they don't sideline Black Adam. Hopefully, Black Adam t- is tied into that somehow. So probably something that deals with you know the power of the Shazam. Now that they've spread it amongst the Shazamly, yeah, you know, yeah. I, I sort of, um, you know, given what we're used to of 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 Billy and and the other characters. I think the aging out of role could be a thing because actors seem to go from 13 to 30 really fast. Yeah. <laughs> like, yeah. you know, that, that and in general, you know, it's a time of life where you grow up a lot in a short amount of time, but it seems particularly noticeable with actors. Um, Ask Jennifer Garner. <laughs> right, right. Yeah. yeah thir- <laughs> she's going on 30 Sorry. and then she's 13. Sorry. And Sorry. She's 50. Yeah. Um, But, you know, I think uh, given the way they've set up, you know, what the magic does, like you are, you become, you know, the peak, your peak potential, you know, at that age, there's still enough distance between a, you know, a 15, 16, 17 year old and a 30 something year old that I think they could continue this storyline along. You know, I don't need to see Billy Batson, you know, hit the gym and get ripped and be, you know, a... Uh, you know, a, a heroic looking 18 year old prior to his transformation. But, um, you know, hopefully they get moving on a sequel soon enough in that the the audience demand for it is there to move this along and, you know, maybe have some, some thought about where they want to go, where they could get this into production pretty quickly. Um, you know, where I see them going for the sequel um, or what I would like to see them do with the sequel is a little bit to Eric's point on, not feeling a big difference between Billy and Captain Sparklefingers. And I brought this up a couple a couple weeks ago too. I'd like to see um, development and maturity of Captain Marvel himself and maybe get a little bit of that uh, wisdom of Solomon element that just sort of maybe yeah. it takes a little mm-hmm. bit to develop and see Captain Marvel become a bit of a different persona than Billy. I think that would be a very intriguing direction to go in. Who knows if they do it, but I think that can make a great sequel. Yeah, I would. I, for me, I just don't want them to do what they did with what Marvel did with Guardians Two. <laughs> I right. guess. Oh, I think that's where I'm at with it. Uh, 
don't double down on everything that worked in this movie. Expand it. Um, I do think, like you said, you think, um, do I think the kids are going to grow? I don't, um, I don't know. How old is the guy who played, how old are the two kids? Asher Angel's, he's, he's 16, okay, right? Just, he's 15 or 16. Okay. So, I mean, that's yeah, like a Hollywood couple- nine. That's true. <laughs> well, <laughs> yeah. Yeah, but I mean like you said like Garrett said, it seems like the next time we see these people they're like full grown adults. So <laughs> so, you know, I think it might have to be sooner than later. But I I you know, they need to get the script right. They need to grow the the characters need yeah. to grow. They need to definitely nail whatever villains they want to put in it. I hope they don't keep all of the guys that they haven't I hope they don't keep Dr. Savannah as a big part of the second one. I hope you no, know, obviously we're gonna get some Mister Mind. I hope they do something with Black Adam, uh, but I would think, yeah, what what Haas said earlier, probably two, three years, um, maybe start filming in a year and a half, and then we get the movie, right? You know, two years, or what? do two and three and, and film them together. <laughs> oh, yes, yeah, like Back to the Future, right? Yeah, <laughs> because that worked. Or, or Avengers. <laughs> it, it did I, work. I, it did not... work. It did work. Garrett, don't go there. Just it, don't. It worked. It's like uh. It's like, you know, making fun of the slowest Olympian, you know, the the worst <laughs> think, Back to the Future movie is still pretty darn good. I think good. we almost, I think we almost yeah. crashed Twitter that day. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> good grief. We, that day. <laughs> that three days? Every, every days? other Every other week. <laughs> How yeah. many days and all the that callbacks. one specific one? Oh, God, that was a long... That one, yeah. it, of course, started as a Dark Knight Rises thread and then it evolved into <laughs> Back to the Future It was my three. fault. Yes, it was my fault. Yeah. I started, <laughs> I brought it up. Oh boy, yeah, okay. But yeah, Shazam was good. Yes, go see it. I think it. we all Shazam enjoyed was it. Good. Yeah, we go all see it. Bring definitely go see it. Go see it. Bring your older children. You know what? <laughs> Br- yeah, bring your young ones. Bring your and scar them for desensitized life. children. Yeah. yeah, yeah. If you have young kids who like edgy things, then yeah, bring them too. <laughs> and if they're not, um, <laughs> if they're not, you know, feel free to. Uh, to reach out to to me on Twitter, I'll give you I'll give you my <laughs> advice on when to like you know distract them or shake a shake the popcorn in front of their face or something because there's really just a couple <laughs> spots you need to be aware of. The rest well, of it is like total general audience. No, like uh, your the your oldest is what six? That's too young. Yeah, I nah. Know. Yeah, I no, saw no, no. some bad yeah. stuff at six. <laughs> that explains <laughs> so much. That explains so yeah. much. Yes, yeah. explains so. Secret much. of the ooze. <sighs> oh. <laughs> <laughs> Ivan Zoo. Ninja. Ninja. Saw, rap. Yeah, he saw a ninja rap. That's what scar anyone. Mm. <laughs> Meat stick nunchucks. Mm. Oh, God. Yeah, yeah. Power Rangers. Yeah, the other day when <laughs> I, I sent that to Ryan that was released. Was the second one or the first one? I don't remember which one it was I sent the you. First, right? No, you sent me the second. I sent you the, the second one, right? Yeah. 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 I said, I'm like, oh, Scott, I'm like, he would enjoy You're this. Damn right, I did. So. And you should, then I watched my nephew, it. man. You should talk to my nephew. You should talk to my nephew. He loved he loved those I'll movies. I'll talk to your nephew. Yeah, he's thirty now, <laughs> thirty one. <laughs> so you guys, you know, you can chat. My uh, yeah. my nephew is uh, due to be born in two weeks. Take so him to there's a big bit of an <laughs> age difference. <laughs> Take him to yeah, Joker. There you go. He'll be old enough. Yeah, I think... yeah. He'll sleep through Joker. <laughs> I'm sure. <laughs> Or not, but that no, kid yeah. will be messed up. Yeah. <laughs> Start him young. <laughs> <laughs> oh, man. Hey, Nora look. is so into Aquaman right now. I was going to say. She's, every time we log into, like, Voodoo or something, even, like, she'll see the uh, ad for Aquaman. She'll be like, Aquaman, Aquaman, <laughs> all right. And she says, she sits in my lap. She's like, all, all right. right, Aquaman. Aww. And I'm like, oh, my gosh. Okay, awesome. I guess we got to watch some Aquaman. <laughs> I got That's her awesome. Aquaman bath time book that floats in the water and it talks about Aquaman and splashing around. It's it's pretty hilarious. She's gonna start saying to you, "My man." Yeah, right. Yeah, I hope so. <laughs> yeah, but uh, I guess that wraps up today's episode. Ex- oh, except for one <gasps> more thing, we should uh, rate and rank Shazam <sighs> amongst the modern day DC films that began with Man of Steel. I'll go first. Make Best it easy. Or favorite? I have Shazam. Because remember we discussed before uh, they're different. Whatever you enjoyed the most. Whatever you, whatever you deem, my mind's kind of combined. What I think is the best right. also uh, correlates to my favorite because I'm that's I'm that's ready how to I piss roll. off Eric. Mm-hmm. So 
so uh so mine is like um wonder woman number one aquaman number two man of steel number three shazam is right in the middle number four bvs number five suicide squad number six justice league's number seven and um for a star rating i gave shazam three and a half out of five stars wow all right well i'll go before eric go ahead um number what are we at seven is there seven now yes seven yes you know let's just drop it down to number 99 is suicide squad <laughs> number six justice league <laughs> then let's see ah oh, this is tough um because the rest from here on out i like um five sorry i wasn't prepared for this um <laughs> a lot of pressure a lot of pressure uh five aquaman four shazam three wonder woman two man of steel one batman versus superman donna justice jeez suck on that one eric get out get out get out actually you could be getting out i don't even know we got a heart out Uh, (laughs) bye-bye so what was shazam what number was shazam i know last time we did a ranking i put aquaman in front of wonder woman those two just kind of go back and forth it depends on my mood sure Whichever one's like I'm in a serious mood, it's Wonder Woman. If I want a fun, it'd be Aquaman. So, and then sure. uh, Shazam yeah, for... stars out of five. I think um, three and a half is pretty good for me. Cool. I'm definitely pretty much like Haas. I'm one Wonder Woman, two Aquaman, three for me would be Shazam, four would be Man of Steel, five um, Suicide Squad, six. BVS and seven Justice League, right. and Shazam is three stars for me. I give it three. Cool. All right, so I think I'm set. <laughs> oh, I can't wait for this. It, I, you know, I feel like this is there's only one that I think a lot of people would give me a real hard time for, and it, 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 it's positioned low enough that I I I don't even I could argue it pretty well. I feel like so number one for me is Wonder Woman. Uh, number two is Aquaman. Number three is Shazam. Number four is Man of Steel. Then Justice League, BVS, and Suicide Squad. Um, I will say I like all these movies to different levels. So like Suicide Squad being last for me isn't the same as Suicide Squad being last for Lauer. Um, I (laughs) went back and forth on Shazam and Man of Steel. I love Superman. You know, I have a hard time picking a favorite between Batman and Superman. It probably depends on the day. Um, you know, maybe I'm more likely to lean in the in the Batman direction. Um, but you know, I, I enjoy Man of Steel. I like it a lot. Uh, to me, Man of Steel, um, given all the repeat viewings and the, the time and how I've kind of settled to that movie, is a B plus, and I think this is an A minus. So I uh, I give well it doesn't equate percentage wise to an A minus I give this a four out of five stars. Yeah, I'm changing mine. To technically, four out would of five be an eighty. Well, that's consistent, but, you know. I'm with you on that one. You change you changed yours. I have. I'm like, man, that was foolish. People Jeez. at home are gonna be writing this down and be like, dude, three and a half. I'm like, no, it's four. It's four now. Four out of five stars. All right. I, I mean, I don't have, have to now. see it again. But after my first viewing, I was like, that was good. Not great. Not horrible. Right in the middle, three and a half. That's that's kind of what where my head was at. I'm the same. That's how I felt. Pretty much like you in this one. And it's weird because when when we we messaged each other afterwards, I could kind of tell you were kind of in the same place. No, you came out, yeah. Eric, sounding like a dick. Oh, coming out hot. Yeah, you were just hating <laughs> like a dick. All hot over and angry. This movie. You hated it. Yeah. You told us to calm You're down. You're so this full is of crap. Trash. So it's lucky. Like, whoa, 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 You're Eric. Such I, was, a liar I was at Cheesecake Factory drinking a <laughs> strawberry daiquiri because otherwise I'd have been really upset with you. You, you shouldn't admit that. In public. Yeah, that is something. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> um, no, no, no. Was, Zachary Levi is a horrible was, actor. Wow. Yeah, yeah, he's like. I didn't say I didn't that. Like it. F I this Sandberg guy. I hope he, he never works and again. I, it was, and I will stand by that he overacted. That I will 100 percent stand by. <laughs> he pushed. He pushed it as far as he could push. it. I think it feels like overacting when you see a grown man acting like a child. Well, no. I mean, did you guys watch Chuck? Yep. No. No. 
Okay, so Larry, you watched yep. Chuck. That's why this works for me, probably, because yeah, I just that's exactly haven't really seen him in anything. He was the same guy in Chuck. Nope. Yes, You're he wrong. was. Oh, man, okay. so much hating coming out of Eric. Right. Is it like, hate, uh, hate. Fine. <laughs> I'm like kidding. Parks and Rec, you know, you look at, compa- get, compare his character He's to like a Parks investig- and Rec versus no. Star-Lord. Is it like the same thing? <laughs> no, 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 no. No, no, no. Star, I mean, like if Andy I got Chris ripped. Star-Lord was, yeah. Like that, that to me was a different yeah. character completely. Um, but this is like, I kind of look at Shazam as Guardians in that light. Like that's, or Ant-Man. Like if I'm comparing it to a Marvel film, it's one of those two. Yeah. Right? Yeah, it's like a Guardians and, and maybe even closer to Ant-Man. Right. In terms of just the goofy, like fun of it. Uh, and a little bit smaller in scope. Saturday. I mean, yeah, exactly. Saturday, March 23rd, 8.13 p.m. Central Time. Eric Holzman. It's okay. <laughs> oh, I really, I really didn't Bile. like any of the Shazam parts. Aquaman was better. <laughs> any of the Shazam uh, parts. Aquaman was disagree. better. Disagree. I don't know what you're disagreeing to. Captain Marvel was better, which his name it is was. Captain Marvel, so you kind of <laughs> yeah, Eric screwed that one up. Very ambiguous. I just CG ambiguous. did not bother you. Yeah, uh, and then you had an LOL in all caps. So I don't know what you were up to. You don't know what I was yeah. at. Wait, what, you what, just you saved we his text, talking? like not the conversation. And then you threatened to find some <laughs> tweets, and uh, Levi was your biggest problem. So there you go. I haven't changed oh. my thoughts. Now maybe I'll. Then really you called me. It. Maybe I'll. Then see called it. me Boo. So it got really weird. So <laughs> 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 I ended on that. Yeah. No. I mean, maybe it sounds like Eric. Viewing, this change. is all accurate. Yeah. Yeah. It, Hey, I'm 100%. What a dick. (laughs) (laughs) Oh, man. (laughs) Sorry, sorry, sorry. I keep it real. I keep it real. I keep it real. Keeps it real. <laughs> do we have? Uh, I keep it real. Do we? Ha- so I think we- yeah. So that's everybody. Do we have any any plugs before we? Yeah, get out I'll here? go. I'm all, all riled do up it. now. Thanks, Eric. Um, <laughs> on Batman on film, I finally got the top ten live action Batman slash Bruce Wayne moments post up. Ooh. Bet you did. Um, it was tough, and of course, there's like. Are there controversial picks? I don't think any are controversial. There are no, some I... that were that didn't make the list that some people for mostly anybody that I've heard of, which is not like a ton of people, but um they like oh you good list, totally agree. But this one, where was this one? And I'm like, ah, I know. Ah, I know, but it's a ten a list of ten, not twenty. So if I had to I redo was... the list, I probably would end up well, see, I don't know. I can I can leave any off. No, stand by your piece. Yeah, I do. I, the only thing I thought was odd was the "I'm not going to kill you, but I don't have to save you" moment being number one. I thought that was a strange choice. Crickets. <laughs> <laughs> I didn't even have to think. Wait, what? Did I really put that? Because I did no. not. Good no, try. you did not. <laughs> Good boy. Uh, and then right now I'm actually I'm reading the Court of Owls novel to write a review and put that on back. Right, I want to read it. That. Is it is a smooth read, as in like mm. in no time at all I've gotten through bam a third of it. So yeah, nice. so they they really struck out with their first one of these Batman novels, which was the Killing Joke. That one was right, the Killing Joke, not good. Which that we can talk on a podcast someday about the killing joke in general because I kind of have a theory on why that didn't work. Yeah. Uh, but then the Mad Love story that came out two months later, that one was awesome. And uh, so, yeah, Paul Dini co-wrote yeah. that one. And then this one is off to a really good start, and it plays as a sequel to the uh, the comic story rather than try. Oh, so it's not just uh, a retelling. It's like a sequel, so that works out really Ooh. well. In which that one, I actually just got the absolute edition of that in the mail, so Ooh. it's a big week for Ryan. I learned nice. to read. Yeah, he has a lot to a lot of plug this week. What what about uh, Garrett and Eric? What do you got to plug? Uh, so I uh, my most recent uh, Justice League comic book review is posted this week. Um, you can find that up on the site. Um, I'll jump to the end. I gave it a B plus. I think this run is really solid. Um, this uh, this this little mini arc inside of New Justice um, on Justice League. You see Scott Siner. Um, and Jorge Jimenez both 
um, consistently working on the last three issues together as the creative forces and the continuity and those issues have been great. I think the story is very strong. I'm having a lot of fun with it. So um, go ahead and go check that out over there. Um, you can find me on Twitter, uh, Garrett, G-A-R-R-E-T, uh, Watto, W-A-T-O. And uh, like I've said this before, uh, you're going to get some fantasy football. You're going to get uh, some NFL news. <laughs> probably probably a, a bit much for some people's taste, but I, I promise I also talk about uh, superheroes and comic books and movies a heck of a lot too. Sweet. Yeah, um, I really don't have much to plug. <laughs> but but you will. But I will. I'll put stuff out there. I mean, obviously, if you guys want to talk to me, it's finally 33 on Twitter. But I review doom patrol for bof so my review should be up. the show is so good it really is i i like it a lot more than i thought i would but uh yeah. definitely guys check it out check out my reviews hopefully they help you if you're thinking about going watching it not really sure i try not to get too spoilery in them and just give my opinion on each episode so you find that there uh yeah i mean i do other stuff on the site too you can search my name in the search bar Eric Holzman. I am also the co-host of Live from the Green Room with Pete Vera. We do it every Thursday night after Gotham airs on the East Coast, so 9 p.m. And uh, yeah, we have a lot of good Gotham discussion on the Facebook. Li- it's on Facebook Live in the Batman on Film uh, group. So there's a link to it that I actually don't have off the top of my head. <laughs> but uh, you just go to the Facebook, the Batman on Film Facebook Live group and request to join and you can catch us there at 9 o'clock on Thursday night. Sweet. Yes. And there's only two episodes left. Yes. That, uh, it's on a little mini miniature hiatus, but uh, in a couple of weeks it'll, I'll be back for its final two episodes. So. Yeah. Yeah. It's a uh, end of an error. Nailed it. Okay. Then you'll have to do. Then you'll have to just do Pennyworth. I and actually, Batwoman. We did talk about that. I actually like Pennyworth, actually, by the way. Pennyworth but, looks way more interesting than it has any yeah. right to be right? already. <laughs> I agree. And I'm like, geez, okay, fine, I'll watch it. <laughs> and we do, Pete and I do plan on doing Batwoman when it's on, airs in the in the fall. Yeah. So we should be, you guys can, will be able to catch us there as well. Did that get officially picked up for series? I know they're doing a pilot, but I didn't know if that was, yes, okay. Yes, yes. I'm pretty sure it got picked up. So, uh. Fantastic. Yep. So what about uh, you, Ryan? for me, just um, please again, go back to and listen to 139, the no guns, no killing podcast. That one's just so good. And um, go back and listen to show 141, which, which uh, hopefully by now, most people that are going to read detective comics, 1000 have done so. And uh, you can go back to show 140, 141 and listen to our big old podcast discussion and breakdown of that entire issue. And just have a, have a good chat about, uh, that landmark issue of detective comics. So, um, listen to that. Follow me on Twitter at SMB underscore Ryan. And of course, follow the, the Batman podcast network on Twitter at bat pod network. And I guess that's going to wrap up today's episode. So for Eric Garrett and, um, Eric's boo, Ryan, (laughs) I'm Ryan. Thanks for listening. And we'll catch you next time. Hey now, you've been listening to the Batman on Film Podcast, a proud member and the sponsor of the Batman Podcast Network, batmanpodcastnetwork.com. You can listen to the BOF Podcast on iTunes, YouTube, Stitcher, Google Play Music, iHeartRadio, Spreaker, TuneIn, and wherever good podcasts like this one can be found. Want to advertise on the BOF Podcast? Go to advertisecast.com slash the Batman on Film Con Podcast. Follow Jet on Twitter at Batman on Film and on BOF's Facebook fan page at facebook.com slash jet.batmanonfilm. Email Jet via jet at batman-on-film.com. I'm announcer Rachel. Thanks for listening. Thanks for listening.